Welcome back, everybody, to Six Invitational. Sorry to cut off the B stream. You can go watch that over on twitch.tv forward slash Rainbow Six Bravo. But we have a game of our own. We've had a moment to kind of take a breath after our Wolves matchup earlier on, beating W7M, and we are ready for a second game. Dark Zero versus Team Liquid. Welcome back. The analyst Eskam Melch, the medic with me, our, our NA duo for this matchup, Jesse and Laxing. Gentlemen, I'm very happy to be here. I've never worked with you directly, Laxing, so... No, this is this is brand new for me. And we're I'm breaking new ground. Hey, we're, we're breaking the ice. Yeah. Let's go. Excited to get into it, too. I mean, we've already seen on the A stream one Brazilian team go down. Now we'll see another Brazilian favorite, not against EU this time, but NA. So it should be a fun game. Do you expect it to go down the same way, Jesse? <laughs> is this NA shill? Can we, can we already put it up? I will say that I expect it to be an extremely close series, just like the one prior. Wow, that's How a very ends? bold statement we'll of see. you. Let's see if they can live up to our previous game. And actually, I wanted to talk about these two squads, because you see there are top performers on these two. And one of them was part of a latest transfer from Dark Zero was Naif, of course, EU import, which means they're always good. So Laxin, I was about to say, EU, imp up. Im EU imports seem to be the best thing to happen to NA. But no, Naif has stepped in tremendously from the role that he came from originally from MNM. Now coming here, he is actually the fifth highest rated player here on that defensive role, and also the second highest rated in terms of that role with Handy above him from FaZe. I mean, what more could you want from a support player when you're playing as well as he is? And I think he excels in that category because he knows when to play aggressive. He knows when to play passive. And I just love to see this performance coming out from Naif. I would love in the positioning coming through from Naif. He's often on the attacks, maybe that pinching player, that guy who's coming in from the behind when there's a big distraction going on from Dark Zero and the operators they're bringing. Naif will be the guy below the bomb site or pinching in to really clean up those kills. And I think he's been excellent in terms of working with Dark Zero. He has slotted in perfectly. And that's actually incredible because these are big shoes to fill to come in on a new team on the other side of the world and yet still perform so well. Has that been the case for World Champ Bolo though? So, Bolo hasn't had the best performance overall, but he's not doing terrible by any means. I think he's still finding his footing, just like Naif was. So, overall, I mean, I don't want to write... The, the tournament's not over yet. Absolutely. Bolo can still pop off. So, I'm very much looking forward to it. Hopefully, it happens in this game. It's the one to have it happening. But another player also on Dark Zero is Pambister. Yes, Pamba has not been the flashiest that we've seen so far, but his Ying play at this event, I think, has been better than any flashy. other player. It has been <laughs> flashy. Pamba has been killing it so far, and I want to highlight the, the stats specifically. He's picked Ying 16 times out of 52 rounds. It's more than any other player at this tournament. And Dark Zero's win rate with that Ying has been incredible. You saw it there, 57%. For a very defender-sided meta, that 57% is insanely high, basically tying the highest win rate from any attacking team at this event, which would be Sonic's also at 57%. His personal KD, 18 and 10 with that operator. Pambazoo has been really good. He's been using it both in the execute, of course, to take those important ground, but he's also using it on the roam clear sometimes in substitution to speed up that clear. Throw a candela into a room, walk on in. If there's anybody there, shoot him in the head. No, and I think him using those flashes, they're also really developing this meta as well and able to play an aggressive, but also passive aggressive playstyle that DZ is known for, which is why I think they're finding that success and also bringing that Ying into that pool is, it, 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 I mean, it's essentially helping with overall the takes here because when you look at their stats overall, they've had a total of 56 rounds won, mm -hmm. 30 of those came from their defense and 26 came from those attacks. So there is still that slight advantage in defense, but maybe there would be a weakness to exploit. How is that though on the other side with their opponents, Team Liquid. Jesse. Well, Dark Zero, they do have a weakness. I'm glad you brought that up. Their defensive uh, their defensive entry has been really poor. They've got the worst opening pick stat of any team on defense in the entire tournament. But Team Liquid may have problems uh, taking advantage of that because you can see their conversion there. It was a little bit higher than what their attacking specific conversion is. 44% attacking conversion from, Dark, uh, from Team Liquid. That means they have really struggled to utilize those opening picks that they're getting on offense and convert those to rounds. So even though it's Dark Zero, biggest weakness that they're giving up a lot of these opening picks on defense. Team Liquid are uniquely a team who have struggled to capitalize on that. It's interesting you say that because I was actually sitting down talking to Sensei after this and he's been around with Liquid for a long time. He's yeah. now a sports manager for Liquid and everything and he was talking about that actually is like they do get those first picks but like you were saying they can't convert that into anything else yeah. and he was saying you know what do we need to do? It comes down to it really it comes down to communication. You all need to get together and say hey we got the first pick let's figure out what we need to do in order to play a trade potential. 
or whatever that is. Because the second you get that man advantage, that sets you up for success in such a huge margin because if you can keep trickling that man advantage down, you will always naturally be in the winning side. Well, when you have someone like Lagonis or Lagotnis that's kind of guiding your team, you're expecting everybody to pop off. Paulo is one of those players. Will we see him really transform again here, Lex? Yeah, so in the beginning of this whole tournament, Jesse, I also said that resets was the one one that was sticking out in the beginning, and I guess Paulo Ness took offense to that because now they're <laughs> back to the top, the dynamic duo that everyone knows. So currently right now, Nesk is sitting at the top, Palu is sitting at the second, but an interesting stat for me with Palu is he's not in my opinion, contributing as much as the opening engagements as we've seen in prior. But also, that doesn't take anything away from Volps because Volps has been doing a really good job. But a note, a thing to note that Palu has been playing Twitch 30% of the time. Mm -hmm. And he also has the highest picked rate on Twitch, which personally for me, with the playstyle he's doing, I would much rather see a Brava from him because I think he can get a lot more utility out of that and a lot more beneficial information or getting rid of gadgets that also can help them on their attack. Because again, their attack is not looking great. They only have 19 attack wins. Yeah. Palu's also also sitting at 109 kills through SI so far. That is the second most of any person at this tournament. He's uh, rounded that off with a clean 71% headshot percentage, well above the average of the 54 that we're seeing from most people at this tournament. That is pretty impressive. But then, I'm, I'm actually wondering, because you know the stats we're always asking, like, oh, does that change from site to site or from map to map? Maybe that would be the same thing for headshot percentage. I don't really know. That's a, that's a multi-thousand game uh, <laughs> bit of Excel sheets that you have to go through, Jesse. Sorry for it. But let's talk about those map bands because we actually have them. Let's put them up on the screen. First four bands, Cafe, Oregon, Bank, and Consulate. And it's Liquid that actually start first, which means they'll pick first, they'll go for a Clubhouse, and they are starting off on that attacking side with Dark Zero on defense. They pick that. Second pick will go to a Night Haven Labs, and that's Dark Zero. They'll be starting on attack. Wow, the teams that, that are <laughs> that are get to pick the side, they're always starting on defense. What's going on? And then Chalet to decide it all. Laxing overall thoughts. Yeah, I mean, Clubhouse, I mean, how these map bands actually played out, I don't think these surprised me and Jesse at all, no. especially the Clubhouse coming out. I mean, they haven't looked super convincing on it. The maps that they won, they won a 5-7 and a 7-4. So it's not like it's anything crazy. But again, it's a very default map. There's nothing that they're going to bring here that should be able to catch DZ off guard. It's just more so who's going to bring that gun power, that utility, that communication coming into this first map overall. And in terms of attacks, I mean, that's a map for me. Attacking just is a lot easier on given the meta. Jesse, final thoughts? Very comfy map going for Clubhouse for Team Liquid. This is a map that they've played uh, three times, two wins and a loss through SI thus far. So I think they're going to be pretty happy here. But Dark Zero, again, their attacking win rate being so much higher than Team Liquid does give me, uh, in my opinion, and give them the edge over Team Liquid in the series as a whole. So who takes Clubhouse? I'm going to say Liquid. Gets ready. Upset, Dark Zero. All right, there we go. You heard it here from our North American talent. Thank you very much, Laxing Jesse. It's been a pleasure to start off our second game with you. And actually, our matchup is ready, so let's toss to our casters. NA, can they make it happen? Go ahead. Five, four, three, two. Tez. This is Tez, and this is a banger of a series. It feels really hard to come off the back of that last one because, my God, we were all loving it, sat in the green room watching it. But you and I were talking a lot yesterday. This game feels like it's got so much story crammed into it that it's... I'm so excited for it already. I totally agree. I mean, like you said, that first game, it's always going to be a difficult one to follow, isn't it? You know, we're looking probably top 10 games of all time. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. But let's see if we can fire in another top 10 game of all time. Let's just keep this rolling. Let's go back to back. It'll be Dark Zero versus Liquid. Two teams coming in here that I think um, it's fair to describe as maybe sort of middle of the pack so far. They've had some good results. They've had some that they've struggled with. Um, you know, both really going to be looking to start hitting form. Obviously, they're is a huge storyline behind Team Liquid. They're a big part of our history as well, Des. You know, we've covered them at the SI Grand Final 2021, Major Final Copenhagen 23. You know, we've been there with this team. We feel it more than anybody. You know, this this push to, to get that major title and especially on home soil. So a big day for Liquid to, to really kick things off in a good style here in the playoffs. Big question for me coming into this map. We'll talk more about story in a minute because there's so much of it was the bans coming in. Dark Zero have only banned three operators all tournament long. And even then, the third one, Valkyrie, they only banned it once because another team banned, uh, banned something outside. Instead, I think it was the Azami they took away. The two bans they've gone through have been decayed. KB and Azami, every single map 
this competition. The only other team to ban three operators all tournament long is VP, who have stuck to their two bans as well. Dark Zero are not changing away from that. I was really curious coming into this to see if they would change their banning strategy and if Liquid could then manipulate that. Turns out, no, they're staying with exactly the same operator bans. If Liquid do not have a game plan coming into this, knowing that Dark Zero are very likely to ban those ops away, there is going to be a problem. So look out for them looking to manipulate these bans and use it to their advantage on the attacking side, Liquid especially here. But also, not having to face off against that Azami is going to be a big one. And on their side, the Solus, not at all surprised. DZ have played it, I think, in 70% of available rounds that she could be picked up. So her being taken away is no big surprise. Buck was the interesting one for me because that has been the go-to vertical operator with the removal of vertical nades. Buck has been that go-to. So some very interesting stuff happening in the operator bands and I'll have to find out the impact that it has on the game as we get into him. I did think though we might see a Ying bound. We spoke about it a lot there on the analyst desk. That has stayed open and I am not at all surprised to see Volts jumping straight onto that operator because they know full well Dark Zero are going to use it against them as well. So expect a very fast game here. Yeah, I think we're going to be seeing plenty of of the Ying use with it being left open, almost certainly. We get things underway. It's round one, and this is one that I've been waiting for since I saw that draw. Dark Zero versus Liquid. Let's get things underway. Round one, it's going to be a church, an Arsenal hold from Dark Zero. Just having a look at the positions at the minute. They're sort of fighting them at the boundaries, but not too much presence out in the map for Dark Zero. It's going to be largely a hold on site. Looking very heavily towards the Nile, seeing this lineup on the left hand side. Nothing really screams. I'm getting out in the map and roaming and trying to cause trouble. That would normally be the job of Canadian and the Solus, for example, but instead with that being banned away, there's not too much gain outside of trying to take gunfights, and that's not really DZ's thing. They're trying to look for the information. They're trying to look to feed information back towards those on site on what might be happening based on where drones are. So that's a big element of their gameplay here that is going to be denied away by Liquid. One big story worth uh, reminding everyone of before we get any further into this, though, Tim, every single time these two teams have met, the winner has gone on to the grand final of the competition they're at. Now, if it repeats itself a fourth time, that is absolutely terrifying, but history does have a way of repeating itself. So this could be the start of something great for either of these two teams. Not at all forgetting W7M falling down to the lower bracket, like G2 last year, could do the whole lower bracket win to an eventual win. Too many stories in the first two games alone, Tim. It's just, oh, it's tantalizing. This is, I always love, I love the chaos of groups and I love the stories kicking off in playoffs. It's always the same with SI. When we get through to this phase, you know, over the next few games, it's not happening yet, but very soon we're going to get that bit of jeopardy creeping in as well with losers going home. That's not too far away. It's not <laughs> the case here just yet, but you know that these teams just want to keep themselves rolling now. They've got themselves through the groups. They've got themselves through the chaos. Now it's about picking wins up and giving themselves as much chance as they can to get to that main stage. Volps, he's looking to get the Candela down blue here to deal with that tricky position. I was to disable out the magnets here as well. We're making use of the EMP above. It should mean that these roll straight on through. And sure enough, one inside of blue. No drop coming in because it's immediate smoke response. But Moto, three are pushing their way through here. Led in the charge by the ace of resets. Found themselves one, but elsewhere traded out. It's another one for one going on between the two teams. One of our slower attacking rounds, but a 3v3 with 40 seconds to go, and that diffuser is going down. Tim. Reset's managed to get in behind the boxes here. He's going to secure that. There's no way that Dark Zero could have any impact on it. They're now on the retake. Nerf is down, These and they're all great. pinned back into Arsenal. This really should be an easy win for Liquid because Dark Zero have to cross. They have to move across that corridor, and they've got the line. Palu, we've seen him in this position a million times, led at the bottom of main stairs. He knows every pixel of it he gets one he gets two and that is almost certainly going to secure the round for liquid resets after getting the plant down finds the final man and team liquid come out with a strong attack on clubhouse and what better start could they ask for this feels very reminiscent of the w7m walls series that we had earlier on i'm thinking back to the round when walls opened up the cctv breach and immediately had a blitz burst into cash from construction and started causing chaos in the back line 
Very similar thing here. The dropping down loads of utility onto blue. The EMP, the Yin Candela coming out. You as the defenders see all that and go, okay, they want to push blue, they're going to drop. Someone's going to push downstairs. There might be someone oil. There's a drop coming in, but no. Turns out it is a bait. They all rotate over towards Moto. Three of them dropping in from this spot, including Palu running all the way over towards main stairs. Don't forget, a few seconds prior, his EMP was seen on blue. So it's a perfect bait by Liquid, using that kind of east side of the map to draw attention in, and then everyone floods towards the west side. Really good kind of bait and switch between them there. Dark Zero caught off guard entirely, and great capitalization by the LATAM side. Paul and Nash just amping the team up as well in between. Obviously, these are two names that, you know, realistically, it's difficult not to focus on. There's, we're going to be hearing plenty of them whilst they remain in the tournament. And Paul Lou coming out with a big double is exactly what you want to see if you are Team Liquid. Resets, I think, you know, we've got to give him a shout there in the round three. Not only did he go in and create space, he managed to get the diffuser down. He found the final kill, really putting up the numbers and performance for Team Liquid in round one. This is a lot of hard breach. <laughs> I don't really think there's all that much they need to get open. We've got four tin openers. We've got the exothermics from the thermite. We've got the Selmas coming out from the ace and the Thatcher to assist. It's almost like they really want to guarantee that things get opened up. That said, you want to get garage wall opened up, CC breach opened up, maybe looking in towards construction as well. There are a lot of things on this site that you can open up if you choose to do it, and that seems to be exactly what they're going for. Starting out with these garage walls on the downstairs, it screams to him that Lagonus's focus here should be on getting up onto catwalk on this Monty. Yeah, it normally would be. Um, I was just having all... Ah, that's why I can't see Lagonus on my top down. He's back in spawn on drones. Um, which is absolutely <laughs> fine. That's, you know, his, his role at this part of the round, and then he will push forward, and we'll see him try to dislodge ball up here on catwalk. He's going to have his work cut out for him. I'm just looking, there's no frost on side to slow that Monty's progress down. There is the Legion of Pamba, but it just depends on whether those goo mines are in the correct position or not. Here comes the slow march forward of Lagonis, and Bolo will certainly know that his days are likely numbered. Little problem with the breach, though. Could be an issue, but they're likely to deliver the diffuser through the soft wall that we can see at the minute, so all Nesk really needs is line of sight there, so this should be fine. There's no one I for this hold, really, so Bolo's in a lot of danger. We've got the Capital on side, let's not forget, who is lethal in pushing in towards this site. In fact, I think Fabian and Fresh are talking about it. Capital might be a worthwhile ban for this map for some teams, but Vaults here really should be the key influencer on how this plays out. But right now, he's being challenged on the front door. Doesn't feel like it's safe for him to step across behind the Monty and get the march on through. You know, we've gone two minutes into the round, and have we reverted back to the utility meta? Because this feels like Liquid are attacking into it, despite there being really not that much to slow them down. Yeah, Lagonis's push was really slow down by a well-placed goo mine up at the top ball or no choice he gets flamed out up on the top of catwalk as he drops it's going to be volps to pick up the kill onto him pamba sends out more goo mines to just try and prevent that push from the monte into catwalk and lagonis needs to be careful because he could take lethal damage if he's no not aware way. of that pamba goes over the top rope but he can only find one before reset shuts him down resets continuing to go big here in round two but time is going to become the issue. The Maestro Cam, the evil eye, finish from NJR to take down the shield, leaving us now. Three versus two, 15 seconds left to go. They could just push for oh the kills man. here, Des. NJR second rated in the whole tournament so far. Left in a 1v3, but it's a good bit of trade play coming out from Liquid to take round two. That attack, really interesting. As I mentioned, you had Bolo playing inside a garage with no real assistance. There was no, were my magnets to catch those firebolts coming through, which meant his life was forfeit. And I was ready to say, you know, the Maestro here hasn't offered a whole lot. Like, surely a Mai is stronger to bring. And then he rocks up and just gets a kill onto the Monty, who's pushing his way up catwalk. It didn't slow Liquid down. They're very good at pinching out onto those players that were stuck inside a garage. Two kills to themselves, convert the 5v3. Another great attack. And for Dark Zero, we've seen it so many times, Tim. I imagine after three rounds, you have Liquid take another attack. And bearing in mind, three attacking rounds on the bounce, unheard of. There would have to be attack timeout because this game plan is not working. Yeah, it's kind of looking like everybody might have just been saving their attacking gameplay for the playoffs. <laughs> then. We've come in expecting, you know, through the groups we've seen this, uh, we've spoken about this heavy defender meta, and then we come in here and all of a sudden we're seeing all these attacking rounds come out. And 
I'm, I'm not getting carried away. You know, it's early days. It's two rounds in. But Liquid looked good for those first two attacks. The one thing I will come back to is something that Doki said on Twitter, which basically was, you know, good teams know how to attack in this map meta. The ones that haven't figured it out and can't attack are the ones who simply have not grown with the meta. Yes, it's defender leaning. Yes, it can be painful to watch. But I think the longer the tournament wears on, you will see that kind of 61% odd defender win rate slowly come down as teams get a stronger and stronger feel on how to deal with things, right? I'm not at all saying that it's now easy to attack suddenly because we're in a later stage of the tournament. It's more that teams that are good and have got an eye on the ball have figured out, okay, actually, there is a way to beat it. And often, it's bringing along 12 flashes, it's bringing along Ying. It's going fast, as we saw from Wolves. And as we're now seeing from Liquid, we're 30 seconds into the round, and we already have players hitting sight for NJR. On the support once again, he's absolutely slaying them here. And in comes the backstab, Bolo off to the side, Pamba with the close. Liquid, they go nice and fast, but DZ have got a response. I think Liquid just getting a little bit ahead of themselves there. Nerf did get caught out inside a stock. He heard the prox alarm and knew straight away there was somebody beneath him. There was nowhere for him to go. It wasn't possible for him to drop that hatch. But beyond that, NJR just completely locked down sight there. And you just feel that like that was the round that Dark Zero really needed. Team Liquid were coming in not quite starting to run away with it just yet but that third round tells you they were feeling themselves they were thinking right there's opportunities here let's keep the pressure on let's go 100 miles an hour let's bully dark zero and dz at exactly the right time have stood up there and said all right calm down you might have two <laughs> rounds but you're not gonna run all over us on clubhouse so liquid back to the drawing board probably for round four uh, maybe a slightly more patient approach yeah and admittedly if you're trying to make plays like that then yings for example a few teams you've seen do this is they take control of site very, very quick and then make aggressive use of flashbangs of candelas to deny the retake coming on through. The problem there being they didn't take full control of site. Admittedly, basement on this map, it's hard to take full control of. There's a lot that you need to control. There's church, there's blue, there's arsenal, there's dirt, there's motor, there's even bottom main. And as you saw there, back arsenal was the spot they didn't control, which really let Bolo come alive and get two kills. A small oversight by Liquid ultimately cost them. But one thing I'd remark on, similar to in the last game we had between W. 7M and Wolves, it's okay if things look a little bit chaotic on the attack because you only really need a couple of rounds in your attacking half to have a strong defensive half coming off the back of it. So you know what? It's high-risk gameplay. It's very fun to watch if you like watching teams just try and flood in and win gunfights because that's often what it turns into. But with two rounds on the board, they may have already got enough out of this half. Here we go, though, with round four into that second quarter. Tip. It's going to be a gym and bedroom defense. And once again, the Ying is back going to have that wall open really quickly as well. 40 seconds in, and that is Jacuzzi Breach. Done. Palu is off and away to more than likely Breach Construction, I would expect. Um, he's going to have the uh, Ace of Resets that's doing the CCTV wall for him. So we're going to see um, that player just scarpering, I think. It's going to be Bolo who tries to move around. Pamba picking up a big Nitro, but Bolo does get caught on his rotation. That's a big nest double as he goes in and just starts carving some space at the top of Red Stairs. Great attacker to catch, though. I mentioned the Ying a few times now and how powerful it's going to be throughout this series. Bolt's being taken down so early. Does remove some of that space creation that you get with the Ying. Drop a candela in a room. Watch everyone except a Warden run for cover. Still, three players left on the side for Dark Zero, despite being against four Liquid players here. They've got a C4 still in back pocket, a couple of impacts to play behind, and, of course, their lives to make good use of here. On the attacking side, not tons to bring to the party in terms of utility. You've got three flashes in the back pocket Palu, and that's really all that you can afford to lean on. They've got breaches opened up, they've got things they need, but moving forward from here, I think you're going to see a bit of a painful slow end to the round. Yeah, and you've got that low health finesse at the minute. He's got two nades in pocket, which, you know, after the nade changes, it takes two seconds after the bounce. That's the detonation time. You can't cook them anymore. But what they are used more for now is moving players out of position. You dump a nade in there, they have to move. So they don't want to lose that utility, but Canadian is able to take it away from them. And all of a sudden, We've got a swing in manpower. It goes from four versus three to three versus two as Dark Zero managed to pick up a couple of kills. Lagonis, he's looking to move his way in. Could be a little bit of a backstab here, but I think Nath is just aware. He's looking out in that direction. Lagonis signals his presence with a couple of shots. This is going to take a hero play from Liquid. Look how close the three players of DZ are. They are literally all sat on top of each other. You can see the outlines on your screen now. Really stacked up and looking for this main stairs fight, and understandably so, because Lagonis is now the last player left to try and push through this but I mentioned it might be quite a slow, painful grind out to the end of this round, and that's exactly what we've been given. He sees the leg flicks coming around the corner, but nothing to shoot. NGR put slightly low, but 
DC don't really need to engage this one. Time is on their side. NJR with the close and a comfortable round four. Again, for me, like the dominoes, that's the example I spoke about the other day, the small things in the early round leading to massive ones in the late round, losing Volps there was the big pain point because he was the space creator, the one that would have let them get control of key rooms on the map, and I don't think they expected him to go down so early in what turned out to be quite a surprising engagement, even if Ness got a 2k off the back of it. I'd be interested to know whether... Um, I didn't see the Nitro, obviously it came up on the kill feed. I'd be interested to know how aware they were, DZ, of the fact that they killed Ying, um, because... We, we saw a very patient defense from them, a very patient round where after Bolo was lost, they kind of just sat back on site and waited for Liquid to come to them. And as you quite rightly say, that big loss of utility early in the round, losing those Candelas, um, really hurt Liquid and their ability to get inside of the site like that. So I feel like, you know, maybe if DZ were aware of that, it was a conscious choice from them to say, look, we can sit back a little bit now. We've got the Ying. Because you know if there's a Ying on site, the attack is built around that Ying. You know that the execute is built around those candelas. That's how you're going to create space. That's how you're going to get the diffuser down. Um, so either way, it was a great round from Dark Zero. Very patient play on site, not over peaking, just taking their chances. And they've managed to level things up 2-2. And we're seeing a little bit more of what we would expect from the defenders on Clubhouse. Crucial change coming in here is the comp change for Dark Zero. We're back on this cash CC site. I mentioned last time round, yeah, last time they had the Ying, that's now gone. Bolo's on the Frost, which is quite interesting. Expecting a Monty to come running at them again. But the critical change is is Pamba moving on to the Wamai. I mentioned that last time around that they had nothing to stop Volps getting in and just burning them, uh, burning them alive up there. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened to Bolo. So I like that there's that adaptation coming in here to deal with that. However, you've now got Ying and the Capital to face off against. So you're gonna get smashed in the face by a ton of utility that forces you to move one way or the other but it feels like they could have got a lot of the right tools to make this play happen. And really, this round should move a little bit quicker than the dependency on the Monty that we saw last time they played this site. Yeah, I think like we'd uh, recognize that maybe they just run it a little bit close to the wire in terms of time and that it was uh, reasonably easy for Dark Zero to deal with that push. They've pretty much rotated now after opening up that breach. That's going to be there for Phantom Pressure, but they are going to be pushing from the gym and bedroom side. Nesk is going in on the Ying, but it's Pamba once again, second entry in a Row. This mm. time he takes down Volps, and again some key utility. Pamba manages it twice in a row. Des. It's Ying last round. It's Capitao this round. I'm really perplexed as to how he's been caught out as well. He was playing around Garage. It was Pamba down on the ground floor around the motorbike that got the kill onto him. Feels like I'm playing Cluedo there, Tim. He was playing dancing around the motorbike inside a Garage, and that's where he got the kill onto Volps. If Volps is exposing himself to the Garage door so early on. Why? The rest of your team are all pushing in construction side. Your job is to sit, wait, maybe drone them in, just, just be ready for when your team needs you. So getting picked off so early here, playing a crucial operator yet again. It was Ying last time, it's Capital this one. That removes half of their serious execution threat. Four versus four, then as Paolo manages to pick up Pamba in, I can't even call it a trade, it was that late, but he's gonna uh, just be able to push forward a little bit. Nesk is holding this angle in towards the top of Red Stairs. Liquid, 58 seconds left to go, that's plenty of time for them. Resets manages to join the attack inside of construction there, so there is uh, no Selmas in his pocket now that he's got the construction wall open, so there will be no further hard breaching coming from him. Uh, anything else would mm. be on Lagonis' shoulders, but they should have everything that they need here and Candelas. in go the Candelas. Nesk is going to start this push. Do they know about NJR? He can't move at the moment. Oh. Nesk goes all the way through sight, but Nif manages to cut him down. Just beamed him despite being flashed out as well. It was a great Candela coming in. Now resets makes the cross. They've got no idea that NJR is tucked in close. Lagonis comes in, gets it down, but it's still two for him and Palu to clean up. And Palu talking about cleaning up. It's a wrecking ball on the downstairs. Nif with the clean up down to a 1v2. Lagonis had just headed out a site there and he was kind of waiting for Palu to get there uh, but it never happened Lagonis now needing to find kills he's challenged from both sides Bolo is the one to pick up the kill from the garage catwalk and Liquid again just struggling to get that execute to create that space the Candelas went in Nesk followed them but nobody else really did and NJR was able to just wait out the flash effects on that cash door and then he sprung and got a really important kill to bring 
break the back of that attack. How many times has NJR done that to them over the last few rounds? Dark Zero have looked really, really good on the defense over the last couple. It's the timing thing, right? And that really is what's making or breaking so many attacks at this competition. The best teams are so in sync with each other that they pull it off. And for Liquid there, it was like a game of chess. It was a counter to a counter to a counter to a counter planned. Where, as you say, we had Ness being able to bolt it in towards Nape, who was sat inside a red. NJR sat inside CC door, was at least momentarily flashed. But as soon as that wears off, he's able to sing, uh, swing out and start getting involved in the round. Nafe somehow beamed him. I thought it'd be full white flash at this point, but apparently it had just wore off. And that was where you saw NJR spring here. It was so dependent on getting rid of Nafe on red stairs. And the fact that he stayed alive really saw all that round come apart. What could have potentially saved it was if Lagonis gets into uh, West Window inside of, inside of CC, beams NJR, and then turns and holds the angle onto Garage. But he was about five seconds behind the rest of the team there. I think he was expecting someone to push across Garage who was holding Catwalk. Just these little things where people move at the right time. Some, for the right reasons, don't move when they need to. And again, it's hindsight, it's 2020, it's one of those things, but fundamentally, they hold on. And what, an, uh, 20 seconds in, man, 20 seconds into the round. And Palo has been beamed. Something else we saw back in Wolves W7M was early spawn peak attempts coming out of either side because they knew the game was gonna move fast. So if you can catch someone off guard when they haven't done their drone work, this kind of thing can transpire. And let's not forget, Tim, that Ash in this meta is the counter to Mira. That now means, again, another crucial bit of utility will still be online for the defenders with no response from the attacking team. That's it. You've now got to start trying to play with those Hibana pellets, maybe, to take the mirror windows down if you want them down. And this just so easily shot off, especially on a site like Clubhouse. Um, He's got Church and Arsenal, it, really. there's always generally going to be an angle onto them to be able to take them down. So like you say, the mirrors likely survive through the round. And what a great start. Three rounds in a row now that Dark Zero have been able to pick up the entry. And it just means that Liquid are constantly playing this 4v5. This time it hasn't been a huge loss of utility. That's one thing for them other than, as you say, the Volps. mirror problem. But Volps, he's going to be trying to work quietly. Not always the easiest thing on the Blitz, but he's going to try and sneak his way down Dirt Tunnel and see if he can maybe just uh, throw a little bit of chaos into the mix. Well, we've mentioned a few times throughout this half, Volps has been the first to fall, carrying crucial bits of utility. And you'd argue maybe the Blitz is also very critical in this round, but one, a little bit safer. And two, you can see how passive he's being is waiting for his team to say now is the time to go i imagine you'll see some form of utility dump mainly the nays the flashes and the frags coming out like you're starting to see now and that's when he'll strike but he's been caught completely out by a canadian and that is this round shut down already unless Nesk can go huge. Yeah, Canadian had his number there. He was just led prone Ready. inside a dirt, waiting a minute and a half for his moment, and he got it. He was the main character in that tunnel. Now that Nesk is going to be pushing down, sending those nades in, trying to move players around. But the mirror window, you picked up on it at the beginning, Des. It just provided NJR such an easy kill onto Nesk there to shut it down. Final kills come in, and that's going to be Dark Zero taking a fourth round in a row, and that leaves us 4-2 on their defensive half. More of probably what we expect. Expected. Yeah, I said this back at the start. Liquid having two rounds is mental to see a team do so well at starting on the attacking side on this map in particular. And you might think, well, why Clubhouse in particular? Clubhouse is one of those maps that it has been forever. One of the maps that kind of dictate you must bring a certain attacking composition. You have very little flexibility in your attacking lineups. You need a Thatcher. You need a couple of hard breaches. You used to need soft breach, for example. Admittedly, not as important in this meta, but there are more ways of getting around that. And so there is some limitations. Occasionally, you see like there for um you'd see a ying and you'd see a capital you'd see a blitz but you don't really get too much globals i think we saw lion picked up once as a great example and i'm not gonna lie that feels a little bit silly i imagine he slipped past drones to get that kill onto palu but it's uh Still not the best spot to stand there just waiting patiently or sat on drones, for example, and it's a freebie picked up. But yeah, I think two rounds is great for Liquid. Many would sit there and say, I'll take two rounds on Clubhouse on the attack, no problem. Three is always the dream. But for Dark Zero, now they've got to flip onto their attacking side and show us what they can do. As I mentioned earlier, I think you'll see quite a lot of Ying coming out in this half, even though in this first round there is none of it. Instead, we've got Bolo on the glass. Hmm, okay. 
I would say when you bring in an operator like Clash, you've got a very specific plan um, in place. I would yes. imagine it will involve Dirt Tunnel and possibly some smokes. Um, but saying that, there's no smokes on side apart from the Capito, so they're going to have to be very reliant on Pamba and Glass um, working together here if that's going to be the case, if they want to take full advantage of that thermal scope. Uh, normally, um, of course, Glass could bring them for himself, but Bo instead opting for the nades, which is obviously something that we've seen, you know, really drop off in popularity since the change to the fuses that you can't cook them anymore, so the vertical nades not really being a thing. We've seen very few kills achieved by nades. They're more just there for creating space now. Yeah, notice on the attacking side for both teams, you've seen quite a lot of breaching charges brought for the exact reason the Buck is bland away. You're not really seeing Sledge played at all at this top competition, just not really in the meta when Buck is a thing. And I think without that now, Ram you'd sometimes turn to, but for Clubhouse, um, not often. You see the occasional team bring it to get kitchen and hallway opened up, but more often than not, what you'll see is a Buck. With that not being available, it's banned away. Instead, teams, it seems in this game at least, are relying solely on that secondary utility to get the job done. Canadian on the IQ just roaming around the entire map here, giving all that information into his team, pinging out exactly where the gadgets and concerns are. And then we're going to have hatches and verticality started. At the minute and a half mark, it's not too bad for Dark Zero, but continue considering that there was nobody out in the map for Liquid, they haven't really had to chase anybody back to site, clear any roamers. They possibly could have done this a little bit quicker. They could have, but I think both teams have been relatively slow so far again because trying to play for the rush game, not really going to be a go-to. Dekebe is a massive part of the rush game play you see coming out of this tournament. And admittedly with things like Fenrir still on side, yes, the army's taken off, but Fenrir is like the ultimate. It's slowing down attacking teams and just denying you really any real agency that you do have to be more careful. You do have to be more measured unless you're willing to play like 12 flashbangs, but come back to the book ban, you've got to bring breach and charges to sites like this. And we're going to be hitting the stock hatch now. Just looking for that angle down to blue generators. Knows that there will be a presence down there. We see the impact near go in, likely to just burn out that were my magnet, which it will do. And then we'll give access potentially um, for the Capito to send in any further utility. And as suggested, Bolo and Pamba are working together. Bolo likely to try and use that smoke utility from the Capito. And if just having to push into the smoke a little bit will continue to be delayed. And I did mention time earlier of the Dark Zero. It's coming down to the 15 second mark and they are only now looking to push side. Yeah, you've got to make use of something here. You've got to get something done. Two smokes are still in back pocket. They're not even going to get to use the glass the way they want. It's kind of a drop and hope for the best, but straight into one of those FNAP mines. They're planting through it as well and still they can see absolutely nothing. Talk about blind hope coming out from NJR. He'll be sticking it through, but getting pushed in. Liquid get the close down. Tim, that was a 20 second meta round. Quite literally at 20 seconds, DZ just realised Ah, crap. We're going to have to drop and just try and make this work, despite all the utilities still stacked on site. Yeah, I think Liquid did a great job of uh, the defence there. They were they nice did. and patient. They were very calm. They just waited on site. It's not always the easiest thing to do, to just sit on your keyboard and think, Ugh! you know, you want to take the peaks, you want to take the challenges, you know exactly where they're stacking up. But Liquid, they would not be pulled into a fight that they didn't need to take. They just held it, waited for their time. They wasted time really, really well. Um, and I think, yeah, DZ overall, maybe just a little bit too slow on the attack there. Recognise that map's clear and get yourself in. We see teams, you know, with sort of two minutes, 22 minutes left on the clock, opening those hatches, Huge. and you just feel that that extra 30 seconds might have really done it for them, but as you see there, just mopping up, NJR managed to get the diffuser down, but it was a little bit meaningless in the end. Well played, Liquid. Yeah, when the guys still on the actual like plant spot are blinded by the FNAP mine, you're relying solely on those two players inside of Dirt, and as we saw on the replay, Volts just fully in control of that bottleneck entrance, and it's an easy closeout for the side of Liquid. 4-3 then to Dark Zero. Expect that to balance out in the next couple of rounds. As you can see, Liquid on the defensive side. We spoke about it to death at this tournament so far. And now Dark Zero are finally seeing Pamba get across to the operator they spoke about on the desk. It's the Ying coming along for him. And I like, I've really worried for a second because during the uh, start of this round, we saw Polo again on the glass and I was like, man, we just didn't see it of any use last round, I'm afraid. So I'm glad that there's been a change away back onto the Thatcher here. Some more supporting the opening up of NJR and Nafe when looking for those reinforcements, for example, or potentially making use of the 
and more for the utility on site. In particular, I'm looking in towards Nesk, if they can get an EMP near him when the execute comes in, or onto those FNAT mines. Those are the two golden targets for this round. Fox just taking a little tickle of damage there as he moved across the main door, a spray through the barricade and a bullet or two catching him, um, but nothing too severe. Black Eye cams, of course, um, being brought along regularly for the defenders with Valkyrie available. We're going to have the breach opened up there, and that is step one um, in trying to push across to the gym and bedroom site. That's going to allow access into CCTV. It means that Dark Zero can get a little bit of pressure then onto the balcony side, start using those windows because they don't need to worry about being peaked. Perfect. He goes Pamba in behind the Candela. Fantastic use to get that entry onto Nest and start carving that space. Palu is in big danger as well, caught out from that utility. Full flash and taken down. Three versus five. This is a great attack from Dark Zero, but resets. He gives them a little bit of hope here, Liquid Volps. in the middle of the round, and Volps on the flight manages to find Bolo. Three versus two after a flurry of kills. I literally called it 30 seconds beforehand. Two AMPs committed on the roof above the ward, and they drop a Candela in, and they flood in towards Red. And the thing is, Liquid are leaning so heavily into Ness being able to hold top Red. They've got a shield committed to that hold for that exact reason that he can deny the breach. But when he can't turn his gadget on and his full white screened, well, you know exactly what happens next. The flurry of kills come through. They get rid of two. Volts tried to make a backstab from underneath happen, but simply Dark Zero were too ready. Great start to the attack for them. And Tim, they've still got a whole minute to work with. Yes, they haven't got the Ying on side anymore, but with two players on site now, and that's all you got to play behind, those C4s, for example, this is winnable. I only worry about where the Goyo canisters are going to be, because that could really slow this clock down to zero. Yeah, I mean, Dark Zero making a smart choice there. NJR getting open, over, opening that jacuzzi wall. We saw that Lagonis was just standing there. He was waiting to take his fights, and for my money, Lagonis is one of the best site players inside a siege. If you let him pick his position, if you let him pick his fights, he will close out a round like this. And so, by opening that, it creates that phantom pressure, it moves him around, and all of a sudden, Liquid can't be as comfortable. But there go the Goyo canisters that you mentioned, and it's on the right window. Oh, Resets man. has just made it so difficult for Dark Zero to do anything. Ten seconds left to go, and Liquid, they just need to try and keep themselves out of gunfights for now. But Nath, he goes in through the master bedroom window, starts getting the diffuser down. The cover was essential. NJR Beautiful. with one, Canadian with two, and Dark Zero find themselves 5-3 up after their first successful attack. And again, great use of flashes. It is becoming the defining part of this competition. You had Reset sat on that West Main breach and ready to kind of step his way through in towards Jim and challenge onto the plant going down. But as the plant started going down for about a second in, we would think two flashes immediately dropped onto him. He's full white screened. He can't move, which gives them a little bit of time to get in position and ready to deal. One on the gym window, one sat over the planter, and they get a beautiful crossfire as he steps across the challenge. Just, again, brilliant team play out of both teams. I've loved the way they've orchestrated so many of these attacks at this point. And at five and three, Dark Zero have got that two-round advantage. Tim, we're coming into that critical round nine here. DZ win this. They're up to six and three, and something tells me they're not going to be like Wolves and throw it away at map point. No, you can see uh, definitely a world here where Dark Zero are going to take this this opening map. And when we come in, obviously, we look at those map picks and we think, right, who likely wins what? And for me, um, I think Liquid on Chalet, I'm not too sure about as a decider. I'd, I'd be kind of concerned as a Liquid fan for them having to go there. And I sort of feel like if this is a game that they're going to win 2-0, I mean, yes, it's always the best way to do it. But for Liquid, it's definitely going to be the best way. And that's why I see Nighthaven as what I'd call like a swing map. If we go in there and Dark Zero win it, for example, if Liquid do manage to come back here on Clubhouse, then, yeah, I think it's going to be a tough day for them. But... Even then, it might not matter because Dark Zero right now, they're taking Clubhouse away as well. They're not letting Liquid have anything here. The beauty of it is that this competition, the only two teams that Dark Zero and Liquid have lost Clubhouse to has been the reigning world champions and the reigning major champions, G2 and W7M. So even with these map picks, I don't feel like either team is like at a huge disadvantage when you look at it. I think with 
with Nighthaven Labs being second, I honestly thought that would be the decider. Decider. It's quite a low prep map for both teams. I thought Shally would be what DZ opted to go with. So that might have surprised us a little bit here. And I think we could be in for a really exciting map too. But I'm with you. DZ win here. I'm expecting a 2-0. I'm loving watching this DZ team as well. The, you know, the, the performance has been so exciting so far. Five entries in a row now. Liquid just unable to get themselves that bit of a, you know, that bit of a boost of a start by picking up that first kill. And you feel like maybe that could be the difference for them in a round or two. But Dark Zero just absolutely taking it to them. Any bit of space that they are offered, Dark Zero will go in and take. They're using the utility well, pushing in behind the Candelas, fantastically effective over the last couple of rounds. And now they've got those main stairs locked down. The track stingers are going to prevent any flank there. And Bolo can start working his way across to put a bit of pressure on construction. Big one, really, again, is NJR. I mentioned him earlier on. Very highly rated at this competition. Second, I believe, overall in terms of rating. And this game, that really a making, great a, game. making a play for first as well at 12 and 4. It's been absolutely unbelievable. I mean, really, a rounded team performance. You look up and down that Dark Zero side, sure, Troy's looking a little bit quiet, but everyone else has been really getting involved in the game. Admittedly, players like Bolo have been thrown to the walls at points, sat inside a catwalk, but otherwise it has been a team effort, and that is what's beautiful to see. Now, this one's looking like a bit of a slow round once again. We're coming down to the last 50, and no one has died. A couple of shots back and forth, but that is really about it. And I'm looking now when the execute comes in, and Pamba's starting to shock in those Candelas. They were going to be the defining factor of this round. Now, who moves? Bolo goes in, manages to get the kill onto Volps. NJR finds Nesk on the catwalk. Pamba, one of his own. This could be flawless if Liquid don't stand up and do something here. Lagones is trying to hold onto the red stairs. Full flashed. It's not looking oh, good flash. as the diffuser goes down. He does manage to find a kill through the flash, but it will be only one as Canadian closes him down with a trade. Palu cut down underneath and Dark Zero with another fantastic attack. Looking absolutely electrifying on Clubhouse at the minute. Go 6-3 ahead. Like a Venus flytrap in that round. I spoke about him a second ago. Canadian's been pretty quiet in the game, but in that round, he was the key man, the one that was going to unlock or see this round crumble. Because what happened was, we had a bunch of players stats around red for Liquid or inside of sight. And what do you do when you get Candela, Tim? You run away. You don't want to stand there full flash, unless you're Lagonis, apparently. But you want to get out of dodge. You want to evade. So they were forced out of cash and out of CC by the first couple of Candelas. Then a third one flew in towards red. They were forced to run down red stairs. Who's waiting on the garage door? Canadian. Gets a couple of kills down there as players run below. And they could have been the defining factor with those C4s. I think it was only Palu who managed to get his C4 off, but the plant came in very cleverly up on elevated ground on one of the tables, not in the default plant spot for that site. And Dark Zero just coming into every single round with a plan, and that Ying is crushing them. I mentioned it during the operator ban phase. I was kind of surprised not to see Liquid ban this operator away. That probably needs to change going in towards Nighthaven because Pamba is just too damn good at getting those Candelas into prime positions to enable and unlock the rest of the team. We have the tactical timeout brought in by Liquid and you just got to wonder, is it too little, too late? They find themselves now on match point. They need three rounds in a row. So this is going to have to be some serious work by Hugzord. The coach stood behind them. You can see Lagonis just getting involved in those conversations as well as the IGL. And just, they've got to change the direction of this ship because right now, Dark Zero are absolutely all over them on the attack. And like I say, it's, it's fantastic to watch from the North American side obviously you know we came into the tournament and a lot of the fear was around the Brazilian teams and how effective they are and how difficult they were going to be to beat but I tell you what for my money North America has really stepped up here at SI24 I look at Dark Zero I look at SSG I look at the Sonics all going fantastically well mm. and I'm looking straight away at this lineup Tim I spoke about it a bit earlier that you're not really going to see it too often on this map some teams have employed it but Bolo is going across to the Ram for this downstairs attack quite obvious what the game plan is here get yourself inside a kitchen hallway open the whole thing up with a nice horizontal ram charge all the way across and then get yourself inside a kitchen and do exactly the same thing with no book and no sledge that's going to be the go-to. Well, sledge is available, but no one wants to play Sledge at this competition, as I've mentioned. Overall, out of nine rounds, I know I keep going on about the entry, but Dark Zero are seven and two overall um, with six in a row. And they just really are making the most of that man advantage they're able to use. Now, last time around, they didn't win this site. Liquid able to go back to Church and Arsenal. Um, and my, my one criticism, really, of Dark Zero's attack is they didn't leave themselves enough time at the end of the round. Liquid didn't play out anywhere in the map. Um, and I, Dark 
Chaos Hero could have got in there quicker and started doing that work. It's the same situation again. Liquid are all down in the basement. I'd like to see Dark Zero right now starting to move in. They're getting hatches. This is better. This is what we wanted to see in round one for Dark Zero. At this point, Tim. With them rolling while well, running away with this half, it's no massive surprise. Admittedly, they're one of only three teams in the whole competition with an attacking win rate above 50%. The other two being, surprisingly or unsurprisingly, G2 and Sonics. So at this point, you would expect them to come in and have a good half. It's exactly what we're seeing. Once again, I'm looking out for Canadians' EMPs here and looking out for where Palu is. They have just punished these setups, making use of those EMPs so many times over, and not just to get things opened up. So keep an eye on that. They'll be a big key to fight side in fact, whether or not Palu can slow them down or not. And I love the, you know, you mentioned the use of the EMPs. I love the vertical use of them. It's not yep. something that we see too often. You know, you often think about throwing them in there horizontally, just trying to get them into the right place. But it can be really smart to just dump them on the floor up above the target. It will do the same job. So Dark Zero not uh, sparing the... Not sparing the damage at the minute as Volks manages to take a little bit on the Fenrir. Palu is maybe going to be feeling the effects. No, the glass is still in effect. Volks manages to find Nath. Can Palu pick one up on the door? Absolutely. Lagonis and Ness, they get ones. And it's five versus two now as Liquid holding on nicely. It's a very small thing, but you saw the step back from Palu to make sure those glasses were available when the blue hit came on through. I thought we might see a bait and switch start Liquid employed in their attacking half, but not to be in this round. DZ were hell-bent on forcing blue, and Liquid have absolutely destroyed them on that push on through. Six and four. It's been the one site that Liquid so far have been able to confidently hold on to on defense. Um, I was kind of eager to see Dark Zero move a little bit quicker, as I said at the beginning, um, but ultimately, maybe just a little bit too one-dimensional from them. Yes, they had the time. Yes, they got in and opened things up quickly, but then, like you say, just really tried to brute force it from one position when you feel like they probably had the time to, you know, maybe work from kick and work into dirt, work to bottom of main stairs and just give Liquid a little bit more to think about. But um, Dark Zero are still going fantastically well on the attack. They're going to be looking to close this out. Two more opportunities for them this time. It's going to be that looks from the outlines that I've got in front of me on the top down. Um, like a CC, no, it's a gym and bedroom hold. I mean, they've got to go through both of these sites, right? Pick your poison. Is it gym and bedroom or is it cash and CC? You now can't defend in the basement again if you're going to get us through to overtime. And I really doubt we're going to see bar and stage getting picked up. I remember we saw quite a bit of creativity with that when it first became available. And I imagine this meta, just when you've got strut sites that you consider quite strong with the defenders, like why go for all the craziness of trying to defend, you know, top floor and then the ground floor as well if you're trying to defend that site when you can keep it a little bit more simple and just overload these top floor sites with utility. Once again, seeing the mirror coming in and being placed straight onto that cash wall. Saw it last time around when we were defending up here as well. Didn't really seem to bother Dark Zero. I imagine it's more for information for Liquid to get a feel as to what's going on on the outside. Historically, I've seen teams shoot that mirror window out and it lets you then impact trick or deny that wall at the cost of giving the attackers a line of sight straight through into one of the main rooms on this top floor. However, also considering the defending human bedroom, it is also a room you can afford to lose. So it's much more about trying to slow things down on the other side. Darks are even going to start things out in the west here and not worry too much about what's going on out towards Cash and CC. Yeah, this wasn't the focus for Dark Zero last time. If you remember when they attacked this site, I commented, um, you know, how with a minute to go, NJR had rotated over and opened Jacuzzi to prevent Logonis playing next. in that position. This time they've opened it at the very beginning of the round. Um, I like to see it. It just creates that little bit of discomfort throughout the entire round. Um, I was going to suggest this may be the technique of dealing with the mirror window as well. Go for the upside down repel, get the exothermic on. It's going to take the whole lot out. It is a round where they haven't brought along the EMPs that I was mentioning before. Just a couple of micros in the back pocket for Canadian to help them get the walls opened up. So Nesk in a power position, able to do some damage on the Warden as long as he's not bothered. Last time round, he got cleaned out of here very quickly. The best be a better plan in mind for Dark Zero than if that's not available. Maybe looking in towards the Grim and the Lion combo here to really slow things down. But here comes, um, I mean, you saw the red icon, mate. So that's a good way to get rid of the Warden. It's just native. him. It's as easy as that. A couple of kills fly through out here on the east side. And that honestly might have just cost Liquid the map tip. I was just going to say it's essential that Liquid hold on to cash and construction for as long as possible. They've 
just they've dedicated so much utility and manpower in there and it's all come to nothing within the first half of the round dark zero dealing with this I'm fantastically well it just seems like dark zero on clubhouse have got a plan a b c d they just keep going on no matter what is placed in front of them they've got a way around it lagones bulbs two versus five and they are gonna have to fight for dear life here to try and hold on and keep liquid fighting in this one against what has been Attackers so far a pretty scary dark zero team well who would have thought absolutely stomping and rocking things on the attacking half of this map it looks like dark zero should get a clean sweep out here only two left to five versus two and 30 seconds to play with it's enough time to get things closed out especially how composed dark zero have been in round ending scenarios and sure enough the bees are in the bullets are in everything is in and paul lagone this is left one versus five this should be a DZ map one, Tim. I would have expected so. Very little that Lagonis can do in this position. He's trying to find his shots, but it will be a flawless round to match an almost flawless performance from Dark Zero on map one. What a finish from them. Absolutely dismantling Clubhouse, showing us how to attack it once and for all. And they will be heading into map two with a win under their belt. It's crazy to say that attacks make the difference, really. I mean, the two first rounds coming out of Liquid, excellent. Very impressive. The backstab into Moto, absolutely love seeing it. But from there, Dark Zero recovered, and they look rock solid. I cannot wait to see how Nighthaven goes. Let's go to a break. When we come back, the desk will break it down. See you in a few. I mean, they trusted the smoke canister. They trusted the fire, but they had no cover. They get the win onto the first fight. They're just going to move behind the class. Now they're doing everything they can, but a smoke canister forces them off their own retake. What? If they'd have just kept strong arming that, they might have been able to move behind the class. There's Dark Brown on the back end. There's the class gone as well. Three for Dark will get caught out by the swing back round, but their retake was foiled by themselves. In the chaos, Moosey with a huge one. He will lose the round. The timer is too far gone. Fury open up with yet again another Ossa plant play. And it shows you you don't really need to take care of the clash. You just need to force some fire back enough on the side and you can, so you can go for a plant out there. Fury. And again, I mentioned it, previous map as well. Very focused on getting these plants out. Very focused on the objective game. You can see here it's a 5v5 post plant that's happening. Because they had no idea that that plant in the meantime was going through. They trusted the smoke. They hoped it was enough. Not the case. And whilst Moosey finds himself in that 1v1, loses it in the end. No time anyway. So I was quickly uh -huh. trying to go back through my records to see. Because I don't think I have a record of Fury playing this map at all. I know I don't have it at the majors. I know I don't have it at the tournaments. But my stats, unfortunately, aren't quite including of the smaller things however i know you have access to some of the biggest brain sheets in the yeah, world we'll look it up right now the console 75 percent win rate played four times four times only a single Ten loss pretty good map for fury pretty good map for them to bring they haven't played it at Five the majors tournament at the sort of major scene as well so you assume as you always do that they've played against easier opponents warmed up into yeah. it but there's a thing as well Right? Like, there's been such a long off-season before we went to SI. There's it been has. so much time to improve your map pool for all of these teams, or maybe even completely overhaul it. So, like, even though they might have played it, like, stage one, right, and then they won it a couple times there, all that data is going to be absolutely useless now, but things have changed. Meta has changed. Operators have changed or been added. So the way you used to play it is no longer the way you can play it now. And again, a great opener for Fury, finding themselves with a bit of a sneaky plant right under the noses of NIP. I mean, it's brilliant play. It, it's, it's brilliant play. They get themselves into that sort of position. We know that they can be good attackers. They lose the entrance. Dark taken out. The man three from the previous round. Wizard still just in a very prolonged fight there, but Muzi finds the swing onto crit J. Wizard's able to get some support. The pair of them head down towards a basement that is otherwise still far from open. The breaks above mean that you assume it's going to get tricked pretty much instantly. So like Colas doesn't feel confident enough to go for the break. And fair enough because, well, look who's gone. The buck, that vertical control that you've sort of always classically had on this site. And this take is no longer viable. Instead, it's going to have to turn into a firefight to win it out. Oh, and there's it. 
Right one coming in from BG, an important kill as well, as that allows you to start taking up some vertical space out here. You can start manipulating that hatch into your own way and cut the corners, and BG does exactly that, manipulates the hatch into a kill on Topio. Three on three. Suddenly, it doesn't really matter anymore that those two opening kills went to the way of NIP. The main wall gets opened up as well. They have the hatch under control, which means there's only two real positions where players can be crucial uh, to, to actually stop this plan from Lycolas from happening. It's going to be around the yellow stairs, or Wizard is playing, and Muzi's position, where he can just swing open uh, the double door. So that's where the next pressure needs to come down from as Lakolas goes down by Muzi, just called it out. And as we find ourselves in the two and three with stunts coming down, it is looking good for NIP, but there's still an opportunity for Fury to bring this back. They've got themselves 40 seconds though, that risk of time. It's a conversation we've had many, many times against NIP and now the favor isn't in their favor. BG man with the rotate background, but obviously without the hard breach and without the soft, you've only really got to play into what you have here, which is the single break and a kit so dangerously isolated. The teammate I9 is just watching from the hatch itself. They're trying to force the players to swing and then they can take them out, get themselves an even game and suddenly they can go for the drop, but they are not handing them a fight. BG man's been able to slip his way in towards the site itself. Might not know about the player they don't. that could swing here. It's wizard. It's Gets the take onto the planner. They can just watch for the remaining drop of I-9. However, they refuse it. They're able to fly their way on through. I was wrong, Hap. I was mistaken. We were wrong. I was wrong. Okay. It has been played by Fury at a major. I looked right over my eyes. Lost right over the G2 game. <laughs> I just saw G2. They lost that one, right? Back then. They did. Was that the only lose. loss they had? They did lose it. That was the loss. Three was to it? seven. Okay. I actually went looking for it to find the loss. And I just, I just straight up lied to you. I lied to the room. I lied to myself. But at least you apologize for it now. I so apologize. It's, it's Turn up to my mistakes. As far and few as they are in between. They only won three of their sort of defenses. One attack when they got to that second half. So they've currently matched their attacking record in that game that they lost at a major. Yep. Fair few months ago. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, it's everybody. It's okay. It's okay. I'm so I sorry. forgive you. I am pretty sure the viewers will forgive you as well. I doubt it. There's already threads on Reddit. <laughs> what a piece. NIP. They have a good sort of stalwart hold on that. The top floor play and the attempt to win their ones did not quite work out. Now they're going to have to go for something a little bit less sort of heft to it then middle floor hold they're not going to rotate their way back towards the top floor i don't think because not yet at least oh yeah you know there's no one currently on the site itself <clears throat> the site is empty entirely now there is a lot of vertical you need to take clear of here yep. okay psycho has rotated his way back into site as the solace they have the hatch the to drop down so they can get the read in and now they're starting to Return to it, but I was very curious because I saw Fury start to run towards that immediate window. I was like, we can just <laughs> technically like, go in. Yeah, I was like, how's this gonna go? Especially because there was no one playing on this one doorway. If there was a drone out there, we could have seen a very early plan to go through. That, yeah, that, that's for sure. Now, Fury did actually make a slight mistake in that last round. They weren't uh, aware of like Wizard's me. position. They didn't drone him out. So he was just playing out there. That's eventually why that round fell apart when it was a 2v3 post plan situation. So they need to be better on the utility and information game right now. Well, that's why they're using the E1Ds. That's why they're using the Candelas to get it with the Boogie to try and think it themselves. Welcome back, everybody. And you're seeing the winning moment with Knife on Dark Zero, which of course, that means Dark Zero have taken the win versus Team Liquid on map one. Clubhouse 7 of 4. Team Liquid have picked the map and they have started on attack. And unfortunately, that led them down a path of doom, not able to adapt to a North American squad. It's a good way to kind of kick things off for NA. Brazil having a few issues, but we're going to talk about that and more. Hello, I'm Elish, your host with me are Jesse and Laxing. Gentlemen, let's break it down. Yeah, I mean, DZ are looking phenomenal. I said it. I think this is the best version that I've seen of DZ coming into this event. And this is what I want to continue seeing. And like even talking about specifically specific players of DZ, NJR specifically was yeah. moving mountains this map. Oh, he absolutely was. I mean, we know him as one of the best anchors in the entire world. And he continued to do that, peeking out when he had to, holding down bomb sites. We saw him in Dirt Tunnel doing really, really well. Round six, even going for a spawn peak. He can play whatever he wants to. And he's finding that impact. Well, and I said, like he was moving mountains at 100% cost. Ooh. You are 
literally doing everything correct in the mm -hmm. server at that point. I mean, even just down the board, everyone was contributing and doing what they needed to do. And you saw the teamwork and communication and the coordination from them. I think this is, uh, again, coming back to the whole meta discussion, right? In Siege right now, the winning team is going to be the one that can do better on attack, the one that can really nail down their pushes. And in this game, that was clearly Dark Zero who were better at that. We saw in the first half, whilst it was a good start from Liquid, they got those two opening picks. I think there was a little bit of miscoordination going on um, between the early round players, Bolo and Pamba on Dark Zero, faltering a couple of times. That got cleaned up so fast. And from that moment forward, after round two, Dark Zero were so, so clean. Here's the spawn peak from NJR, the mm -hmm. guy we talk about as uh, being perma anchor. But I really do think that all in all, we saw so much so much cleaner attacks from Dark Zero. In that second half, when they moved on to it, they were working together. Liquid just never really able to replicate that. Now, adapt and overcome is the name of the game when you're playing against the best in the world. And even here at the Invitational with these best teams in the world, a small, small mistake can end it all for you. Even when teams are so tight and when you're just looking at numbers on a spreadsheet, it does not mean anything when you're in the server. It's tough. I mean, it's tough for Team Liquid, especially even if this was their map pick. This is what they should be winning in a best of three. You always want to win your map in the decider. Um, coming through for this one, for them to not get that first half, I think was a, a big struggle for them. So we're talking about, you know, in the server, in the round. Do you have something you want to talk about, Jesse? I do, Miloš. I've got two clips because we talked about Pamba on the Ying in the pregame, and we saw both teams trying to utilize the yep. Ying. Round five, I want to showcase the first attempt. It's going to be Ness coming through from the Ying. Keep in mind where these defenders are, right? They seem to know it. They flash both of them. But by the time he gets in and is fighting Naif, the Ying Candles have already worn off. Naif can see. And in fact, there are evil eyes in the site that were pinging Nesk as he pushed on in. Everybody else coming through is very, very behind. It just doesn't look like a well-coordinated take coming out from Team Liquid. No, and it falls into my point that I said earlier that Liquid's attacks just do not fundamentally look well put together. I mean, you had Nesk running through there, and sure, you could say he could check that regular angle, that mm. angle that typically people play that Maestro was in there, but you see him just run all the way across, resets his sitting outside the map, Lagonis is outside of the map, Palu is downstairs in the basement. There's nothing that can be done there. It doesn't look like people are actually communicating between each other. It's just one person trying to make a hero play and then running away with it. Compare that to when Dark Zero play on the Ying for their own push, and we see Pamba. First of all, he gets two EMPs from the roof. That immediate teamwork coming in allows him to flash and kill the Warden. Then they push up, Paulo goes down too, and while there is a trade under Pamba, and we do see a flank coming up from Volps on Red Stairs, what happens? Volps gets a pick, everybody's happy, but they are stacked up, they trade each other, they are working together. Nobody's in the basement, nobody's completely off guard, and this coordination from Dark Zero with them playing together was so much cleaner versus Liquid, where that just wasn't happening. Absolutely, and this is another example of a round of where Liquid just were not communicating. You have resets on the bathroom door, you have Lagona in Lodgy, and easily that could have been, okay, resets, let's work together, let's try to, you know, single out someone, but you have resets running in blind, gets a free kill for DZ, and you have Lagonis in construction that can't do anything, can't trade anything, and now you're still left in another 3v1, and that's what we were seeing throughout the defense, throughout the attacks. Liquid are not communicating and applying the basic fundamentals that you need for Siege. The crazy part is that that whole execution mm -hmm. was 10 seconds. Yeah. That whole thing just collapsed. EMP first, follow up with the Ying. So you disable the Warden, you follow up with the Ying, and then you get rolling, you have people that are protecting the flank. There's a lot of moving parts, Lax. Absolutely. And it's just one thing for Liquid. I mean, when you even see them win those rounds, they all look drained. They all look like they're just kind of here. Someone has to step on that team, whether it's Polly, whether it's Ness, whether it's Reset, anyone on the team, someone has to be getting in each other's heads and getting hype because unfortunately, it is a mental game in Siege as much as it is a physical inside the lobby. Your mental has to be there, so someone's got to do it. And we mentioned NJR earlier on, and you talked about him when the scoreboard was up, but we actually have even more of a highlight of him so we can see even more in-depth stats for him. Want to know on the entry, but that's not really his job, is it? No, I mean, he's the hard breacher. He's Absolutely. the guy that's getting down and dirty, opening walls and getting it done, but he's also getting it on the KD and on the board. I mean, his EPS sitting at a 156. Again, I said it at the cost. He has 100%. He is literally doing it all. Yeah, I think for NJR, his specialty is sitting in the site, waiting for that push to come in, understanding what angles are being pushed. Then he swings out. Then he has his impact. He doesn't want to be the first one engaging. He got that one spawn peak kill, which was his uh, opening pick. But all in all, that's where he feels comfortable. That's where he thrives, and that's where Dark Zero use him.
let's actually pull up our map veto because this is the onus is on liquid to come back in this and you mentioned paulo i mean i've been seeing paulo and how he's been playing and the the reaction on his eyes for many years now from the sidelines and we need that to pick back up clubhouse was the first it ended we go to night haven labs that is dark zero's pick their attacking side start way more complicated map to play than clubhouse jesse Absolutely. it certainly is but it's one that team liquid do enjoy they've picked it huh. twice they've played it twice through their history both were their picks in bo3s the first was way back during the atlanta lcq they lost it to los but it was a very close game and they played it once throughout the six invitational they played it against bleed they did win that uh, that time so they are comfortable on this map it's not like we're looking at a map that is completely one-sided but there's a reason it's dark zero's pick six plays with a 50 percent win rate coming into the six invitational and then they played it once here at si 7-2 over gk a very promising scoreline yeah and i'm worried for liquid going into this map specifically mainly for the fact it plays similar to clubhouse in some aspects but it does require a lot of teamwork and coordination and this is where liquid is lacking if they can just figure out of how to work together and just come to a general consensus of what they want to do they can find success map three yes no no if they can ban the ying and they can find some way around that i'm gonna say yes but that's a big if that is a big if our attacking side start for dark zero maybe that's something that liquid can't exploit on their end laxing jesse thank you very much our casters are set up and our game is almost ready to go so asen does it too i choose you Thank you very much, Milos. Back for Night Haven, my favorite map in the game at the minute. I really and enjoy both playing and watching Night Haven. So I'm very so excited it. to see how it goes down. But I am with you. I'm oh, sorry with the death, sorry. And also with you, I'm sure. I'm sure we're all on the same page here. A Ying Ban has to happen on this map. Yeah, we spoke about it in between, you know, really. Dark Zero played in behind that Ying. Pamba going in, just Candela's kills. They played behind it fantastically well um, on Clubhouse. And so Liquid have to sit up and take notice of that. They have to stop it happening again. Tim, Tim, guess the Dark Zero bands. Guess what they're going to be? I think Azami could be one of them. Uh, yeah, fair, okay. What do you think the attacking maybe, one might be? Maybe Dokabe? <gasps> nah, surely not, Tim. That can't be the case. We'll see what comes in. I'm sure it will be, because again, outside of a single map, that has been their attacking bands going, attacking and defending bands going into every single map. Well, hey! There we go, Liquid. They're That's learning. what we needed. That's what we needed. I swear I heard a bigger round of applause than going along with just me too. <laughs> Ying taken away, I think, is a very smart ban here. Unsurprisingly, the KB and his army, no doubt, will follow. And then that last defensive ban, we want worth looking at. I think it will be the Solus. We mentioned already for Dark Zero, this is one of their most played. In fact, I think it is their most played operator when available with a pick rate of about 70%. So surely it will follow through as our last one and then we can get the game underway. But the Ying, the big one for me. Yeah, I mean, Solus is a great op here on Night Haven as well. Um, and I hope Liquid kind of don't make that mistake. There we go, yeah, the ban. I was kind of worried that maybe they ban the Ying and then let the Solus I have through. never been so sure about a ban phase in yeah, my life. Yeah, I was life. like, oh my word, please don't do that to me. Really good. Um, but yeah, the soul is super powerful here on Night Haven. Obviously not going to be seeing that one now with the band coming through. Um, but just so much verticality that's playable here, even over three levels. You know, you can be up in IT, open the floor, open the floor in storage and see all the way down into assembly, for example. And, you know, there's, there's some really deep holds that can be um, that can be achieved with the soul So great choice there on the bands. And we're going to head into things. The question is, how badly beaten up were Liquid during that first match? Map. Not an easy one for them to take. They got a couple of rounds on the board to start with, but then Dark Zero just stretched their legs and ran away with things. And the other thing to remember here about this Dark Zero team Attackers is they come into the SI with two new players. Bolo obviously returning to competitive play, Nath moving across, and that's a system that needs to be built. And they're doing it fantastically well. They're doing it quickly, but the longer that they go through this tournament, they will yeah, only become more, more and more powerful. It's one thing worth stressing as well. With those Five two new players, it does massively change the fabric of a team. It's 40% of the voice, 40% of the ideas and the strats and the preferences that come with it. So you are seeing a transformed Dark Zero team. It does mean some of the maps that we're seeing here at SI are maybe different to what you've seen them play historically. But it does mean there's a lot of excitement. Again, reminding you of what happens every single time these teams have played historically. The winning team has gone on to make the grand final of the event that they met at. Will it happen here again? We'll start to wait the rest of this week to find out, Tim. But for now, we're into that top floor of Nighthaven. I think we've only cast Nighthaven once so far at this competition. It was a bit of a scrappy game. I believe it was GK versus someone. It was very early on. I can't remember entirely, but this game should be pretty crazy between these two, given the caliber of competition that we now find ourselves in. 
So, Liquid have dealt with Ying. That was one of the big problems that they had. Now, unfortunately for Liquid, they were unable to ban NJR, um, who was another big problem that they had in the last matchup. So, the question now is, how are Liquid going to deal with the impact that NJR was able to have on the game last time around, particularly on the defence? Obviously, that's going to be something that will come for them to deal with in the second half. But for now, Dark Zero on the attack. I'm looking for more of this great problem solving that they showed us back on that first map of Club it didn't matter which operator was in which position, they were able to find answers. Wrapping it on the inside there, just in case there was any utility stacked upon the walls around it, but there was not. Quite a light round, I guess, overall from Liquid in terms of defensive setup. Like, there's no FNATs to deal with, for example. Of course, with the Asami being banned away, no keyboard barriers to work your way through. No Tuberau to pair up with the Kaid. So, overall, I won't be too nervous about it. The real big defining thing for me in this round is going to be Vault on that Oryx, though. Really looking for him to get active and stay busy around the map. Of course, he's got the detectors as well to give a little bit of extra defensive information for that side. But they really need this wall to be opened up here as well. We're going to find the mirror window taken out and shot away. So, he's got to be very careful here about what parts himself he exposes. Just enough of a square through the middle, but I don't think he fully finishes the opening. The C4 comes through and that will stay closed. How are you going to deal with NJR? Yeah. Well, you're going to hit him with a C4 and you're going to take him out of the round. As you say, breach stays closed and this is not the start that Dark Zero wanted on the attack here. Liquid are looking pretty comfortable inside a site at the minute. They've got their angles, they've got 40 seconds left to burn and they're at this point just willing to let Dark Zero have to play in three through them. It's going to be through doors, through windows, through barricades. What a push from Canadian, though. Straight into Warehouse. Finds Nestled prone. Pamba finds Ooh. one. And somehow, Dark Zero have turned the round on its head, Des. Liquid, they had it all in their hands. They had the entry. They had the positions. But no, in a matter of seconds, Dark Zero have gone through them like a knife through butter. Done everything they need to. Where's the diffuser, though? It's with Canadian. He's got that picked up now. So I imagine looking to get in on the west side. Volts, he's staring out towards Pamba, but that time's going to run down. They've got to find the man. Do they know where he is? Plant's going down here. Volts expecting the move, but it's not to come. Steve's one. He's got to push on fourth, though. No, the swing comes in from Naif. They weren't quite sure where the last man was, and he could have got away with murder, but... Dark Zero, hold on. And I'm with you, Tim. That looked like a round that Liquid were ready to win. And then they before so you know good. it, in five seconds, three players have crumbled and Dark Zero still retaining that attacking dominance. At the 40 second to go mark, Liquid sort of had everything. They'd kept the breach close. They'd got the entry kill. They were, you know, locked into good positions. They had cover in Warehouse. They had cover out at the top of Aqua Stairs. They were looking at Connector. They had everything sort of locked down. And then from Abs, Absolutely nowhere. In the snap of their fingers, Dark Zero just went in and said, this is our map pick for a reason, and here is a 3K to open things up. Canadian particularly impressive. This teamwork there, Canadian and Bolo going in at the same time, just hitting them in tandem. It just what shows what Dark Zero are building within this team, and it's got to be scary for the other teams looking on. This is something the analysts caught on the desk, and we mentioned it a little bit in the last map when we had the Execute coming from Liquid on top floor, trying to push him from construction, but also Lagonis on CC West window. Things were a little bit mistimed. We even said, oh, Nesk has gone in by himself. Like, everyone else is taking a few seconds to move with him and make things happen. And we spoke about it at the time. It still stands true. The best teams on the attacking side are so good at pushing in sync and completely overwhelming defender positions. Liquid lacked that a little bit on the last map. Dark Zero didn't, and it is Follow them through to Nighthaven. As an example of that play, like you just said, Bolo and Canadian, only been together a short amount of time, but already just perfectly in sync with one another. Yeah, absolutely wonderful to watch at the minute, this Dark Zero side. Let's see if they can continue it. It's going to be round two, and this time they're going to be attacking onto the basement. It's going to be tank and assembly, but I like this from Liquid. They've played a lot of turtle holds, but we can see at least two defenders up on that top floor. I think it's Volps and Parlo up there, just trying to give Dark Zero some mini games, something to do off in the map, burn as much time. No, it's actually Nesk up there on the Valkyrie joined by Parlo and Volps as well. So three of them out there just trying to create as much of a sort of sticky situation for Dark Zero to get themselves through to begin with. I mean, to begin with, it's going to be that case of working through the top floor. 
That's why having the Jackal on side here, I think, is really valuable. Arguably, Nafe as well, playing on the zero. Yes, you bring along the secondary uh, hard breach gadgets, the can openers, same as Pamba. But also, of course, have those SAM cams. Get them in the map. You can see a lot of information. You can flip which side of a wall or floor they're looking at as well. So very valuable for getting information down into that basement to at least offset the information that is offered by the Valkyrie, who equally is countered by Bolo on the IQ. So all that back and forth in terms of the information game. Snitch just going to be holding a long angle there, and Liquid attempting him over and over again, but he just can't quite find his shots. However, NJR will do. I picked him up at the start of this game. He was kept quiet by a Nitro in the last one, but this time comes back seeking his revenge and gets the entry onto Ness. I've got to give it to Darks here as well. Drone use has been great. Bearing in mind, they're trying to clear three floors here. They've still got two, well, they've only had two drones go down in the round. Seven out on field, one still in back pocket. Yep, they're using the information incredibly well and moving forward as a team. One player drone steps on forward, then someone else does the same to a room forward. It's kind of like this cover and move between them that means they can advance through the entirety of the map. Yes, a little bit upset here, I guess, by Nafe being down. Certainly not out just yet, but they know where Parlo is and straight away, NJR is there yet again to find his second kill of the round and Liquid can barely find a kill to him, let alone a round. That's it, they've just not turned up to the races here on uh, Haven Labs so far. They're really gonna have their work cut out for them if they don't get things moving soon. Two versus five, 20 seconds, so time is a factor for Dark Zero here. They are not yet on site oh. and in a position to put the diffuser down and resets is having none of the vertical pressure. He looks above and manages to get the reverse angle. Here comes resets with another two. It's gonna have to be an ace though if he wants to close this out, but the diffuser's down. Five Ooh. seconds, he finds another. He might just do this. There is only a matter of milliseconds, and somehow Resets holds on. He gets a 4K, and he drags Liquid back into this one. Admittedly low HP, but still a nice flick with the pistol off towards his right-hand side, and single-handedly saving the round. Again, I really can't fault Dark Zero. Everything down to the last second was played pretty much spot on and you just had a player pop off before your very eyes. Even the drop they had through the hatch was still two players dropping in so they could play for the trade and that's exactly what they secured. The round was played out perfectly. Liquid have held on specifically resets has done the business for them there. Otherwise, we could have been sat here, Tim, talking about, ah, oh, you know, they've got two kills across two rounds. It's looking miserable, if not for resets, keeping things square for now. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the thing is, the, the other players on Team Liquid sort of um, set resets up with the opportunity there because by burning as much time as they did around the map, it meant that you can see on your screen 10 seconds left to go. That's not the entire answer of how resets has achieved this. He's gone in and got his kill. It hasn't been easy for him. And, you know, by Liquid needed that round now more than possibly ever to get them into this one because it was about to start really running away from them. We see these moments in, in games whereby teams just hit that next gear, that next level, and you feel like Dark Zero was starting to do that now that they're on their own map. But Reset's just signalling that, no, we're here and we're here to fight. It was almost mental as well. He was down to one bullet left in the chamber when he secured that second kill, which is why he immediately slipped over to the pistol. So very close affair, but enough to get the round. Round three then. We're gonna see ourselves stepping this time up onto the ground floor, I believe we're going to, Tim. So we'll see if Liquid can hold on. I imagine it's gonna be similar to previous rounds where it's a case of starting up on this top floor, at least trying to slow Dark Zero down and not giving them full vertical control before we then start looking at the execute coming in itself. Lagonis already shown as prowess with the Nitro, hitting NJR for the entry in the first round. Has it in hand now. He's thinking about getting it through that window if Bolo steps out just a little bit too much. Needs to be careful. Doesn't want to get caught by those explosives. And Liquid not wanting to overpeak this, not wanting to overaggress. We just almost have a little coming together there. Oh, they continue knew. pushing, but get too aggressive as Bolo is able to fight fire with fire and takes down Bolt. Oh, no, and he's found a freebie as well from the roof. Beautiful. Angle. It was a great idea from Liquid. They had a player Better trying to trick up. upstairs. Two players holding supplies. The Bolo couldn't get it open. And despite two Bobby players Mac. swinging on them, he still manages to get the floor blocked out. So resets can't sit there. And they get the wall open into a second kill and now into a third coming out. NGR hitting a two in the round. You know, admittedly, talk about composure in the face of fire for Bolo. That could have gone horribly wrong. But holds on for his team and they get what they need. A 5v2 and they are running away with this map. 
He's earned a little ball or spin or two for that one, I think. Uh, <laughs> just really gets himself into the game, like you say. For me, that just demonstrates Dark Zero's sort of depth of knowledge on this map. A beautiful angle from rooftop through IT floor to get that kill onto Lagonis. And it's just showing them they've nowhere safe. But Nest, he oh. just misses his opportunity there. Bolo able to now turn and fight. And he's up against a weaker gun. And he's able to take advantage. One versus four. It's all up to Palu. He's been quiet so far on the hole today. And they're going to need something big from him now. And it is looking unlikely. 35 seconds left to go. And Bolo, as amongst everything else he's done in this round, gets that diffuser down. Got a tap tap up and the captain falls down. Take his space and get it done. A couple of kills for him, a couple for NGR, another very, very strong round. And I really think there it didn't matter what was going on with Nesk. He was a little bit trapped and you have Pamba rounding on the side in the IQ. So even if he wins the one versus one, he gets traded half a second later. Again, beautiful team play from Dark Zero. They are constantly going into situations with superior numbers, with superior angles and picking Liquid off. And I can imagine how frustrated the Brazilian side must be feeling right now. Every time they get close to a gunfight, DZ are just so tightly tucked in cover that you don't give them a single second to even sniff at a headshot. You've picked up there, Des, on the, the teamwork and the coordination that we see in from Dark Zero and how effective they are working together um, and dealing with problems in front of them. And I wonder how much of that is the influence of Nerf coming into the team. Of course, we know we've got Canadian there who's got all this experience. He's your in-game leader. He's going to make those big calls and he's got a great overview of the game. But And I'm not saying that, you know, that, that they didn't have this presence previously but we know from our experience of watching Nerf over the years how much of an impact he can have on teams in that way you know providing that voice providing um, that guidance that experience and so I'm just wondering you know they've sort of got the, the double there of it coming in and it just really seems to be working fantastically well for them they're um, you know working in tandem beautifully you think back to Dark Zero of a year ago the kind of words that will be thrown about them are you know slow yeah, a little bit messy in places all the right ideas but not quite with the technical capability of executing it to perfection here what i think you've actually seen is not only have the technical capabilities improved with nathan bolo joining the roster like it feels like they're making no mistakes outside of resets is 4k which let's be honest it's an fps it you're happens. gonna lose your ones it is simply gonna happen at some point but i think they've gained pace as well as technical capability without really trading anything off and it just looks so wonderful to see it come together for this roster it really is. This is honestly the best performance I think I've seen out of Dark Zero in a, a long time at this point. That's uh, the whole competition they've played incredibly yeah, that, well. Yeah, that's only, what I mean. SR24, this is now, you know, the sort of peaking. Um, but SR24 in general, I think this is the best that I've seen Dark Zero look in a long time. Um, and it's a, it's a wonderful thing to watch at the minute. So round four, Dark Zero, 2 1 up. Liquid uh, need to make a move if they want to get themselves back into this one. The one round they've had so far on the back of a hero play from resets of course they can't rely on that round to round and it's just feeling like they're a little bit out in the cold at the minute they need somebody to step up and start round after round getting themselves active in this one if you park the 4k from resets it's been one kill across the rest of the team per round played so far that's rough, you know. There's one thing being like overwhelmed strategically when you're also losing practically every gunfight you're coming into. It really doesn't feel good for these boys at all. Like, in what world are Palo and Nesk one and six as a combo in a game like this? That's it. They, they really need their uh, their moments to, to step up. And we know they've got the ability to do it. Um, and fingers crossed for the Liquid fans, at least, that they're going to show us that and that we will see it happen. NJR is going to get that IT wall open. That was something that Dark Zero struggled to get done last time on this mm. site. They had to rely on gunfights, whereas this time it's going a little bit more to plan for them. They had Maverick and the Thermite last time around. They dropped away the Maverick and instead got the Thatcher on side. Just said, forget about dancing around this electric and all that kind of crap instead let's try and look to get things opened up admittedly the electric wasn't here in this round they could have dropped it away but either way they still get the benefit of it you've got the exothermics nice big hole being opened up and then get things moving nesk is this to be zero and four yes it is really you feel should have found canadian there because he had the jump on him but just couldn't hit that critical shot needed again canadian just staying patient there knowing the challenge was coming but just sort of allowed nesk to pre-fire his bullets away before he stepped in really well played from nesk out comes the EMP that's going to allow Bolo to open this long angle with the Selmers and we saw him take advantage of this last time NJR right place right time to cut down Volps Palu takes damage Dark Zero are just swarming oh. over them at the
the minute, Des. The goal is once again that the man left in the hot spot. This time he's fallen. Resets. Can he pull off another 4K to bring things square? The answer feels like no. As the last word canister comes out, Nafe with a backstab coming through as well. Yeah, I've spoken to a few teams here recently and said, I remember like thinking about W7M back in the old days. It felt like you were playing 10 versus 5. They were just coming out of walls and you were like, where can I breathe? And that's what it must feel like being liquid in this game because every time it feels like a player has got an opening, oh, I've got a kill, and they didn't expect it. Next thing you know, there's two players that have got a crossfire on you. Someone else is flanking in behind you, yet they've still got full control of the site. It just feels so... <sighs> so suppressive to play against these guys and look at barely have a room to breathe and understandably so we're still at that point with out of resets his kills being put to one side the rest of the team have only got one kill per round and understandably they need this tack timeout to try and figure out what the hell they can do to turn it around. Yeah, this is the point that Hugzord needs to step in here. And really, I think, yes, it's, there's going to be an element of that sort of direction that's needed. But I think there's also just that mental element that Hugzord needs to come in here, um, you know, and get the guys picked up and get the, the sort of, uh, you know, the hype and the spirit in the team up, the energy up to say, right, come on, let's have a bit of belief. Let's get out and do that. It really feels like looking at them the last couple Rounds, you know, the faces have been sullen, they've been a bit down, they've been, and it's understandable with what they're facing at the minute. But that's the injection that they need here is a bit of energy and a bit of belief, a bit of confidence in just exactly who they are. That's the problem, though. It's like even if you can get a little bit of confidence, if you can start winning your ones, it just feels like Dark Zero have always got something else in the back pocket yeah. to keep things going your way. I think a big part of it, honestly, is losing those ones. Though. I mean, I mentioned it a few times. It's still an FPS at heart. The one round they won was off the back of resets, netting a 4K. So <laughs> everything is working against them. And I feel like fixing one thing is just not going to be enough. I've not seen that portal animation before. That's brilliant. <laughs> just, what was that? I've seen like the banner. Like what? <laughs> I've seen like the banner squad for like skins and that, but I've not seen the portal animations. What's that all about? We're here for it. Have you seen it before? I've not seen that. Yeah, okay, I like it. It's all good. Production, can we do it again? Please, just once. I'm sure they'll treat us as, as soon as they're ready. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we've earned it, Tim. We have to no, earn that's it. We, we need to earn the portal animation. Um, right, coming into Kitchen, Liquid deciding to switch up the sites. We haven't seen them use this one yet. They have the tack timeout. They decide maybe they need something fresh. What are Dark Zero going to look to do here? They're likely going to try to take top floor control. If you can get inside a meeting, open up a lot of meeting to meeting corridor, you can get a lot of the vertical angles onto positions like the one that we see Lagones playing at the minute, for example, makes it very difficult for the defenders to stay inside of sight. Um, so I think they'll be looking for that bit of vertical control. Nerf's taken a little bit of damage along the way as well. And then they can think about maybe getting reception, breaching the wall, and getting themselves on and in for a plant. Really looking towards that ram again that we saw picked up in one round. Oh. <laughs> Very close to us finding his man. NG always just doing too much gardening. He was <laughs> taking the plant out. On, I thought they might want to get in the bomb and get the ram opened up, but they said no, they just said pull the trigger and let's get inside the side, make it happen. Liquid at least have kept things slowly away. Lots of utility being dumped in here to try and get control. Bolo's going to be able to stick it. One comes in for Pamba as well. They will be able to finish this off, and even with the flank coming in from the backside, there is still a response elsewhere. Parley left in a one versus two, and this site is so hard to retake. They've got the round. Bolo's playing cat and mouse inside a site, and Nafe is just picking up scouts for free on the window. you got to feel for Liquid at the minute. There is just so little that they can do to stop this Dark Zero side. They try switching sites, and normally, um, you know, yes, we would expect, as I said, to see that vertical play coming in from Dark Zero, but they say, you know what, forget it. There's an opportunity, let's get inside a kitchen. And it's a, it's a pretty smart play, because if you remember, there is no vertical above kitchen. If you can get in there and start putting a diffuser down, you sort of take anybody on the top floor out of the round. So anybody for Liquid up there is just immediately having to rotate back to site and Dark Zero can pick them up as they do. So again, Dark Zero just, it's like 4D chess. They're just one step ahead all the time at the minute. But that is a horrible shot from Nath. Oh yeah. my God. That sent Ness back about five years. <laughs> Terrifying stuff, but... And they're just having a lot of fun as well. And the team that is having fun is a dangerous thing. There it is, look, look, it's there again. Yes, thank you. I love that. Does it fall out from the top down as well? Is that part of the anime or is it separate? I don't know. I was thought it was brilliant. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Small things, small things. Hey, there it is again. 
I didn't know we have a portal gadget in this game now, Tim. What's going on? We'd love to see it. We'd love to see it. Um, so, yeah, from Dark Zero's perspective, again, it's that problem solving. It's that, right, okay, they've got a top floor presence. Can we maybe go without doing that? Can we just win a couple of gunfights and brute force in? Yes, we can. And like I said, as a team, they look like they're having fun together. They look like they're enjoying playing. And as we know from across the years, those are the truly dangerous teams. I said it the other day as well, like Nathan Bowler have got such like a bromance on the go. Like every time I see him at like lunch or whatever, they're having such a laugh together. They'll be the next yeah. me and you, Dave. <laughs> How do they build that synergy? The swing's <laughs> earlier. Sometimes it comes down to that. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm just excited to see how things keep on developing for them. And I said earlier on, it's like a bit of a joke. Like every time a team's won this one between these two teams, they've gone on to a grand final. But I think even Fresh said just before we came into the competition, he's like, I could see DZ being a dark horse and making a good run here with this lineup. You're starting to see that possibility become very, very unlocked the longer this tournament has gone on. There'll always be that big question. Can they overcome big teams like Sonics, like G2? They've already lost 2-0 to G2, admittedly 275 maps, but can they get the full job done? We'll find out at another point. Nesk again domed. Imagine a world, Tim, where Nesk is 0-6 and six against Dark Zero. That's a line that if you said to me a year ago, I'd be like, nah, that, that, when would that ever happen? Turns out it's happening here, Tim. They're getting absolutely domed. Volt's trying his best to get something done, but Nath, you ain't going to give that one away. It just feels for Team Liquid like they're trying to kind of, you know, with that Volts run out there, it's like, look, we know we've just got to try and throw anything at the wall and see what sticks here. Um, and there's just nothing that they can do at the minute. They are the passengers. They're along for the ride. And Dark Z, Dark Zero are the ones that are in charge of the controls right now of this roller coaster. And they are just taking Liquid for an absolute thrill ride at the minute. They've put them in a spin cycle. 17 as they are 4-1 up. 4-1 in the server and looking like it's going to be a 5-1 half. Bolo closes it out and Dark Zero just on fire. It's like Bolo dropped out that pull animation there to get that final kill as well. <laughs> You're obsessed now... with that animation, aren't you? you cool. love it. I just think it's cool. It's cute. I liked it. That's now 18-2, and two, though, between Nath and Bolo. They are dominating Liquid on this map in particular. Yeah, across the whole series, the whole team has really had their part. Look back at the last map. We were singing the praises of NGR being up at 12 and 4. I said that Canadian was quiet, and then literally three seconds later, he's pulling off some immense plays to get his team forward. And yeah, Pam, but we can't ignore how much he dominated with Ying back on that last map. It just... It's so special when you see a result become a team effort, not down to one or two players popping off. Yes, they are popping as well, but it is a team effort through and through. Liquid struggling barely to put kills on the board, let alone rounds. Yeah, just like I said, Dark Zero's preparation, and I think um, this has probably been won at the map choice as well. This has been one of the map Let's veto. Go but they've gone on to Nighthaven, and they just... They just, like I said, they, they're not one step ahead. They're two, three steps ahead of Liquid all the time. Nesk roaming on the top floor. Oh, Bolo's watching the door, and it's an easy pickup for an entry. And that has happened over and over and over again. Uh, they just know exactly where they're going to be. But as you always say, Des, there is two halves to a game of Siege. We move into the second half, and Liquid right now desperately need that to be true. Production is like entertaining me here. <laughs> it's like Daniel and Carrot's been like, oh, watch the animation at round start, you'll love it. It is, yeah. It, there are two halves to a game of Siege. And I know Liquid on the last map, we praised their first two attacks coming out of it. And then Dark Zero really got with the program and started finding an answer. And my concern is, again, come back to what we saw on the analyst desk. Come back to what we were speaking about in that previous map. The timing for Liquid has just been a few seconds off in most of their yeah. attacking situations, and Dark Zero know how to punish you for that. So I just think unless Liquid admittedly have to get battered 5-1 in the first half, I imagine the comms are low, morale's feeling a little bit low at the moment. For them to come out here and have like a watertight attacking half, I just don't see it happening. Canadian offering a top floor presence at the minute. Uh, Ball and Nath on the mid floor, I think. And yep, I'm correct. And then NJR down inside of sight. So Canadian is going to be holding on for as long as possible. Just trying to burn as much time as he can do here. Um, Volps is going to take an awful lot what? of damage from him up above. And it just looks like Liquid aren't aware of his presence up here. And Canadian's just taking full advantage of that. Yeah, you're going to let me sit up around IT and server? No problem. I'm just 
gonna shoot you from above then. I've got a shot here. And they've let two players slip the net now and get back down towards site, including yeah, almost go. losing vaults, but both Nath and Bolo were out on the roam and managed to escape. Yeah, even down the same staircase as well is the most bonkers part because you'd imagine Liquid would have closed that net and caught someone on the way through, but getting shot from above, letting players slip back down to site without any real bother or challenge. It just looks slow and light. Dark Zero are sprinting while Liquid is still walking. And the raid boss that is NJR on the defense gets his account open again with the first kill of Dark Zero's defending half. Manages to pick one up onto Volt, um, finishing off the work that Canadian started. And Liquid for me, Des, they look a little bit lost at sea here. They're not really sure. They've got players above them still that haven't been dealt with that are gonna hit them on the flank. Time is running out. Yeah. They're just having to start pushing towards side. They're trying to make this work on the push on forward, and fair enough, they managed to get rid of Bolo. Parlo's a little bit behind the time, though, and he's hitting on the flank as well. No one there to cover it. This is what happens when you don't full clear the map. You will get backstabbed, and now their backstab is not going to be online. Parlo's gone. A four versus three, they'll at least get away with it. But Dark Zero, look above you. You've got Canadian working his way down the back, and there he is getting one for himself. A 4v2, and NJR's just showing him a little bit of shoulder, a little bit of thigh, but not enough to complete the picture here. Two left standing. The going is falls. Canadian and Nave complete the backstab. And Tim, Pamba, and Canadian have got to buff them there. They've taken lost ground or retaken lost ground. Liquid cannot buy around right now. Absolutely great. Absolutely great from Dark Zero there. Beautiful. Keep it just chef's kiss. Keeping that top floor presence. Canadian and Pamba able to do the damage. We called it out halfway through the round. You know, I said, you're not dealing with Canadian. You're allowing him to take that vertical shot onto you. They took damage from above onto Volps. They knew they were there. I don't know. I assume that maybe Liquid thought that they could just lock them out, that they could just prevent them coming back on the flank. But the problem was that they never did. And Pamba able to get the kill onto Parlu that opened up the rest of the round. Yes, Liquid got the diffuser down, but it was almost only because Dark Zero allowed them to. Dark Zero were ready for the retake. They knew they had the players that were able to come back and challenge, that were able to do that job, and it was great stuff from Dark Zero once again. Wonderful defense, and they now find themselves with five back-to-back -back series points against Team Liquid, looking for a convincing 2-0 win here on Night Haven. The one thing I was coming back to, yeah, yeah Volks was the right, entry death again here too. We spoke about this a lot back on club, but he's playing critical operators for the attack. It was, it was Ying, it was Capital, it was things like that on the last map. Hang on. <laughs> this one is going to be the blitz, but last round was the buck, and they only had three breaching charges available on the rest of the team. So he was their vertical control, and that's what you need for hitting downstairs. There is so much soft flooring. Yet, if you're going on the entry and often being caught out like this, and you know, you're having to entry whilst playing a key operator, you should be screaming, guys, I need drones, guys, I need information, guys, what the hell is going on? And I mentioned coming off the back of a 5-1 half, very fair chance that communication morale is going to be low at this point, but they just keep on bleeding players in the silliest of ways. And, you know, fair play to Dark Zero for taking the opportunities when they're there, but Liquid should be doing so much better than what we're seeing in this game. You mentioned the entry days. Um, you know, yes, it was something we picked up on Clubhouse because they were, you know, losing so much down utility again. and manpower to it. Um, there goes Volks. I'm going to update quickly mentally. Um, so coming into this now, it is 14 and 5. What is Dark this? Zero are just running away with this. This is... This is just something else right like, now. It's a constant 2v1 in every single gunfight you see. Like, the fact that you can run into connector there as Pamba and get the backstab along with the lesion is ludicrous. The and there's user. nothing there to support them. Liquid look like five players playing their own game right now. That communication isn't there. They haven't cleared Romans, for example. They're getting shot in the back. Players are being left isolated. Just everything is going against them. And DZ are stomping. And that's not what we've seen from Liquid throughout this. It's important to, to note that. What we've seen is that it's increased over the last few rounds. They seem mentally beaten at this point, And it's just got worse and worse for them but yeah as I say stats wise over the two maps on entry DZ 14 and 5 
That is huge. So you are playing 14 oh rounds God. in a five versus four. Nate like, manages timing. to pick up Lagonis. Bottom of the stairs, 1v1. The Nate turns around and goes to the top of the stairs, 1v1. Exactly that. No you, you need to push together if you're liquid here. Nesk finds himself inside a site, just trying to His do at this kill. point anything that he can do. Dark Zero are playing this smart. They've got players underneath. They've got an opportunity to be able to deny from okay, there if the diffuser the should go down. 50 seconds left to go. Liquid desperately need a couple of kills. They've got control of this part of the map, but I think Nace below has got a C4. No, he does not, but does have a shotgun. Doesn't matter, can't get rid of him in this spot here. So he's going to have to retake behind. This 1v1, I was going to say, is crucial, but Palu wins it out. The dynamic duo, arguably one of the most storied in Siege history, have got to pull it off. One falls, Ness gets the down at least, but now he's got to fight an MGR. I'll never fancy a 1v1 against him. Dark Zero take a comfortable 2-0 against Team Liquid. MGR, after a fantastic first First mark comes out and has another belter on Night Haven Labs. Eight and three. He will pick up that final disable of the diffuser to close it out. And what a performance we have just seen out of Dark Zero across both maps. They will continue in the upper bracket with a victory over Team Liquid. And so much of that domination came on their attacking halves as well. Looking back at the previous map, yes, they were up four and two after their defense, but it was on the attack where they really shone and made themselves a big, I think, at least here, planting a flag in the ground and saying we are a team with a serious chance of maybe not even getting top four, but winning the whole thing with that kind of play. There are definitely titans for them to overcome on that journey. G2 and Sonic spring to mind, but you've got to start looking at these boys as serious contenders right now. 20 and three, I think it was, by the way, between Nathan Bolo at the end. Unbelievable. Unreal. We've seen great teamwork from Dark Zero. That's one of the things that I really want to take away from this matchup for that team is how well they have worked in combination with each other. It's been fantastic. They're a team now that I look at and I can't wait to watch them again. They, they've got that excitement, that energy about them, that passion and the ability to back it up. And they are a pleasure to watch at the minute. Can't wait to see more of them, but let's get down to the desk to break down that series. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And there it is, Dark Zero with North America victorious against Brazil. It's seeming like Brazil's chances are being slowed down, hampered, some would say. Welcome back to the desk. I'm Melos with me is Jesse and Bolo, the man. When does he play? When is he on the interview? It is right now. Hello. How you feel? Good. We're feeling really good after that. You know, we did some we did some nice prep. I think in in group stages, you know, the G2 loss kind of woke us up a little bit. Before that, we haven't really fell to anybody in the group stages. So, you know, losing is learning. And I think we learned and we showed it today and hopefully we continue to show it later today. Yeah, well, I mean, through this game, it felt like you guys didn't need to do a whole lot of learning from start to finish. It was feeling very, very good for you. There were those two rounds right at the start of Clubhouse where you guys did drop the ball a little bit. It maybe took you a little bit to get going. Was there anything that changed after those two rounds that kind of got you guys into it? I think, honestly, just the first two rounds were just like simply, you know, getting a feel for the team, you know, just first two rounds of the match, right? Sure. You know, it's, like, it's a little warm up and then we started getting comfortable. We started, you know, getting a little bit loose and playing our game. And I think the results spoke for themselves. We've talked on the desk a lot about how Dark Zero's pushes have been um, very coordinated, very good looking with a lot of Ying and Grim and a lot of these disruption operators. Um, what's it like playing in that type of a style? What's it like when that's going on, the calling that's happening, um, setting up for that as a player? How does that work on your end? I mean, honestly, it's, it's, it's pretty fun because it's like every person has a purpose, right? It's like, mm -hmm. you know, X holds Y angle, you know, X throws flash here, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's all just like a nice choreographed dance and I'm happy to be a part of it. Well, how different is this meta now playing with Dark Zero um, compared to the meta back when you won on TSM? Honestly, it's a little bit faster. It's a lot more about map control. Uh, and honestly, I'm really enjoying it. You know, previous my previous comp experience was, you know, the whole nades under. Uh -huh. Now there was a lot more power spots, a lot more emphasis on like the, you know, the Grim, the Ying, the Dokabi, everything. And it's, it's honestly a blast. It's honestly a blast playing in it. Okay, and I have a, a clip I'd like to walk you through. Um, it is a, an execute that you guys had on Nighthaven Labs. Just tell me what's going on in your thought process and how this push goes for you. I mean, this is just, we kind of we kind of prepped for this. This was a uh, concoction as of last night. Okay. <laughs> so I think it went pretty well. It's just, we wanted to utilize, because we, we knew the warden was top mez, right? So mm -hmm. we just utilized the smokes, the flashes, and just took all the map control that we needed. It was a nice shot. Thank you, thank you. You watch this, watch this. You ready for this? Uh-huh, uh-huh. I was, I was hyped. 
Bam. Look at that. <laughs> you look at that. The perfect dog. Look at that. They can see it back there. Uh huh. I mean, it's just, it's just, you know, perfect execute against a team that wasn't really prepared for it. I think that's just the name of the game at the point. Love it. You made the warden look like, like a chum, to be very honest, between both maps. The timing on the EMPs and all was perfect. We talked about it on Clubhouse. We'll talk about it in a moment here on Night Haven. Bolo, anything you'd like to say to all the fans out there? I'm sure there's a couple of them out there. I mean, man, it was a fun match. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And, you know, let's help, let's help the DZ run for the upper bracket continues. And hopefully you guys are there. Appreciate the support. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bolo. Congratulations, Dark Zero. Move forward in our bracket. And now it is time to wrap things up in a neat little bow before we go to our next matches. Here we are, Dark Zero 2-0 versus Team Liquid. I have never seen Team Liquid so disjointed yeah. as they did today, but that is even more of a positive note on Dark Zero laxing because it looked like they had total control. No, this is Dark Zero in peak form, in my opinion. I mean, they are running away with that game specifically. I said it. I was worried for Liquid to go into this map, just how we saw them play Clubhouse, and to be dis the display that they put on was why I was worried. Mm -hmm. DZ, regardless of DZ just playing a good game of Siege, which I'm not going to discredit that, Liquid just were not there, I don't think, mentally and physically in the lobby. A 5-1 split attacking Nighthaven Labs shouldn't be something that is possible in this meta. Yeah. Yet Dark Zero make it look easy. Their executes are so well coordinated. As Bolo was saying on the interview, everybody's got their place, everybody's got their job, and they work in tandem to make sure that gets done. Really impressive stuff from DZ. I truly don't know if there's another team that is attacking quite like Dark Zero like to with all of these disruption operators, the Ying. We saw the Ying banned here. I, I said I wanted to see that from Liquid, but there's still the Grim. There's still Zofia. There's still so much that you can talk in to disrupt these strong defender positions. And I don't know if there's a team at this tournament that is yeah. utilizing these disruption operators nearly as well as Dark Zero is. Yeah, and one thing that I was looking at, because I, I really like to listen in on comms as much as I can. Mm -hmm. And I think, especially on map one, Dark Zero looked so calm, but in, in like a happy way. So they're actually giving oh. the proper inf intel between one another, giving the good calls, but you didn't see that they were struggling to say what they needed to. and that. That is incredible from this. No, form. when you when you can play in form like that and be short, concise, and fluid throughout your entire round, you're it, you're setting yourself up for success. Nonetheless, you don't need to be getting overhyped. You don't need to be getting overzealous. Just as long as everyone is on the same page, just like you were saying, Bolo set up here. Mm -hmm. If everyone can just be in unison and understand what needs to be done, and sure, if there's a hiccup that happens, as long as everyone's just aware of that and can capitalize off of that and make it still work, that's the basic fundamentals of Siege. So let's talk about our Intel play of the game. Resets from Team Liquid. We'll get that trophy. Yes, if you want to call it that. Here it is. Jesse, please help us through. Of course. I mean, the 1v4, the problem in this round is just 100% the clock. DZ a little bit too slow on this. And you should think, like, you're pushing in against two guys in the basement with your full five. Yeah, the clock shouldn't be too big of a factor. But resets. Oh, my God. So smart to pull out that pistol, too, when he runs out of ammo on his, uh, on his primary. And then he aggresses into the door to take that fight, to catch that second last player off guard. Wins the 1v1 on time. Brilliantly done by resets. That small individual moments, I think that's there for Team liquid the gunplay the mechanical skill from these guys is there but it's just working together being that unit that they've still been struggling with so with that said let's take a look at our bracket and wrap things up post match so you'll see dark zero two zero versus team liquid of course they will move forward and play space station gaming that is for later on today so very very excited for that game of course fury versus nip is happening and the winner of that game will go and play versus vertus pro you can catch that on rainbow six bravo however much like w7m and lost team liquid are not eliminated yet if you come in from the top side of the bracket you have two lives you lose ones that's okay you can still bring it back in the bottom bracket but you play almost twice as many matches was it three versus the six mm -hmm. quite a bit more to which survive. can be a good thing that's not always bad that you get more matches underneath your belt sure your back is against the wall you can't afford to lose but a lot of teams and even for myself and experience i have i i love pressure i love being you know i just in the moment of like i can't lose i gotta be perfect i gotta be on top of it so it's not always a bad thing you know all about maintaining tension laxing right <laughs> a little bit <laughs> a little, a little yeah, bit a little bit, bit. Okay, a little okay. bit. I've never actually. You don't need to show off, Jesse. Never flex on. All right, Jesse. <laughs> let's see you go as well. <laughs> anyways, I, I think I think I need to rest up my chest after this too. So for that, we're gonna cool it down with our halftime show. See you in a moment.